straight fuck it. But it fits. You know, like a 3 8 fits. Yeah, you know. Oh my god, that's a four cylinder. That was a joke <laughs> for us in the room. Ayo. No, no one else is going to get that. Nope. And I'm okay with that. That's fine. Okay, Dave. So on a, on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, how legit do you feel? Uh, you know what, Bob? I think I'm in a, a solid 14 right now. So it's a trap version of the. Uh, exactly. What, what, whatever. Who, who did the we, original? We, the rude. we call this. It was the rude. Oh, was this Sandstorm? Yeah, that was Sandstorm. We, we call this the Sand Trap. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this new episode of the Camcast. Yo! <laughs> We're coming to you live from my frigid ass basement. It's not that bad. No, it's really not. I mean, not. once you prepare yourself, it's not that bad. I mean, it helps that the heater's been going for like two hours. Yes. Yeah. That... Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. I mean, this... Yeah, it is cool down here. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's an unfinished basement. All we have keeping us warm are the heater. Why don't you finish Bare... it, Mike? Because my landlord won't let me. Trust me. Oh. I have wanted to for a very long time. That's That's really a shame. Especially since he's doing Airbnbs with everything. Like, listen, yeah, why would you not finish something if you're going to Airbnb it out? Listen, I'm willing to do this. I got fr- I got friends who do construction. You got friends in low places. I got friends in the right places. <laughs> I will not say that they are low places. We can make this happen. Anyway, uh, I am Doc Taste, dear leader. The man who drilled a shit ton of holes in this table that we have before us. They're really nicely placed holes. They're, I mean, they're really well drilled holes. Indeed, I think. indeed. Thanks. Thank you. You, you you're, used you're... a very proper straight bit. Yes, I did. I tried. <laughs> uh, he appreciates a straight bit. That is Uncle Radical himself, <laughs> professor of the ghetto arts, Dave Raleigh. <laughs> that could not have been done any better. I, I listened to Geek Show this morning, so I got the I got the transitions going. I love it. Yup, I love it. Ah. Uh, and to a podcast left, Picar Doc Bold. Yo, the man who has a running Subaru again. Yeah, it's it's still a, a not a very happy Subaru right now. Well, I, I can get into that in a little bit. I mean, well, let's do this. You, you, let's, do some, let's do some housekeeping real quick, and then we'll get right into that. Dope. Uh, yeah, CamAutomag dot com, CamAutomag on all social media. Uh, shout out to our sponsor, Steady Broke Clothing. I'm finally wearing my Steady Broke shirt on a Tuesday. Hell hey. yeah. Because my broke ass finally did laundry. Nice. How about that? Yep. Uh, just because you're broke doesn't mean you can't live your dreams. Head over to SteadyBroke.com. Get some cool ass shit in your cart. Use CamAuto15 at checkout. Save 15% on that. And uh, go ahead and get yourself some more struggle meals. Yeah. M- make yourself a little less broke. Exactly. Be a little stylish in the process. Indeed. Yep. SteadyBroke.com. CamAuto15 at checkout. All right, Gavin. Talk about your car. Well, okay, let's talk about my day. So, well, <laughs> when, when when we were in Vegas, the, my car didn't shake at all, right? It was just having that little smoking issue. As all as as far as I know, all it did was smoke from the scoop like once. Yeah, yeah. So, I have a, a bit of an oil burning issue that I still need to resolve. Gee, oh. turbo boxer, you don't say. Yeah. Mm. Well, pounded for the last seventy five thousand miles. So you're saying this one came out of nowhere. (laughs) (laughs) Left field, I swear. Um, I don't know what happened. It just started knocking and making shitty noises. I don't don't get it. Okay, it hit me. I had my mouth open and everything. God damn. What I do find really funny is, I. so after I told everyone at work what the actual issue was with my car today, they were like, really? Not head gaskets? Huh. Funny. (laughs) Oh. Yeah. Uh, I mean, mean, that happens. Yeah, so... Uh, the, for the last little while, I've been getting some shakes from my car. Um, whenever, like, straight line, like, on center steering at from about 55 miles an hour and up. Okay. When I'm cruising, when I'm off of, or, or when I'm offload, it's worse when I'm offload. Or just, like, cruising straight, I'll get shake from the wheel and shake from, like, the four wheels. Okay. Mostly from the front, though, when I'm cruising. And then also, if I'm accelerating from just, like, a stop, I'll get wheel hop, like, mad wheel hop. Sun. And, like, gently, but also, like, do, 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 like. Oh, my God. Okay, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> we got it the first time. Oh, oh my God. Got, got to put this desk to good use. We are. <laughs> so, anyway. You're just being a dick with it. I know. Fuck you, it's my desk. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Damn it. I spent two hours leveling this thing, cleaning loopholes. it, punching holes in it. Loopholes. 
You can leave. <laughs> you can leave whenever you want. <laughs> so what's the visitation like for this? Because obviously you two are going to be like co-parenting this table. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> visitation rights are once a week. Yep. Tuesdays. For, for who? For him. For me. <laughs> Mike has custody. Yep. You just get to see it once a week. Yep. Yeah, listen. God, that's tender. I did have that for the last four years, but you actually put holes in it. So <laughs> I made it the table that it is before us. Indeed. Yep. Anyway, back to the story. So it, it's had some shaking going on, and it got progressively a little bit worse and worse. And it's been this way for probably the last, I'm not going to say, because I think that might ruin my reputation as a driver. It's been broken for a long ass time, Gav. Just say that. I'll just say that. Yes. Yeah, we'll leave it at that and move along. Yeah. So uh, over the weekend, I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm calling Nate Wade. I'm calling the dealership. Just going to get it. see when the soonest I can get it in. Because normally it's like a three-week wait or something. And I just moved to this new place in uh, the avenues. And I'm just like dreading spending any more money. Yeah. So uh, I called the dealership. And they're like, oh, yeah. No, just uh, our next available appointment is like nine, is, is on uh, tomorrow. I'm like, oh. Cool. Really? You're like, shit, I wasn't planning on putting it on this paycheck. Oh, yeah, wow. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I go and take it in. And then I use the shuttle from the dealership because they have like a... A courtesy shuttle. A courtesy shuttle, complimentary service. Yep. Because they cool like that. Yeah. Uh, and also, by the way, the service at Night Wade, and like no one paid me to say this. I've just my parents and I have just been buying cars from them for the last twenty five years or so, and we've had our cars worked on there always, and they've always been great. So if you have a Subaru and need work done on it if you don't want to do it yourself. Total side note, if you yeah. you or anybody you know works at Nate Wade and would be interested in sponsoring this actually, podcast. Actually, I have a friend that actually works there. <laughs> Type. Yeah. Get us the hooks, G. G come on. Yeah, boy. Let's start that marketing it. department. That would be nice. Yes. Oh, it really oh, would that'd be. be cool to work in marketing for them. Anyway. Um, That's, I mean, somebody probably already has that job. We need them to cut us a check. Yeah, I know. Um, we don't want to do any of their stuff. We just want them to pay us to do ours. I mean, I wouldn't mind that gig either, though. Yeah, that's. I mean, not I mean, bad. that's the goal, right? We're, yeah, <laughs> we're, yeah. <laughs> we're getting we're getting off top off topic. Back to your garbage. Ranting, ranting. Uh, oh my god, tangents. <laughs> <laughs> so I dropped the car off at the dealership, and oh, also, I should probably mention this morning. I wake up late, go out to my car in a tizzy. Many inches of snow are on my car. Yes. What else do I notice? Is uh, my passenger, or sorry, my driver's side rear door smashed in. Hmm. Fun. Yeah. So as if I didn't have enough going on today, getting the car in, trying to get to work on time and everything like that, I have to deal with this shit. Did somebody leave a note? Somebody did leave a note. Okay. So it's not all they, they bad. They said they apologized in their note. They said, I'm so sorry. My car hit some snow and slid into your car. Here's my number. Okay. So I called them and I got her insurance information. She drives a uh, 2005 Camry. Right. Okay. So now it's got the Camry dent. Good. Thanks to a Subaru. Uh, is that like is that like the automotive equivalent of like splitting an atom? Probably. <clears throat> I don't know. Whatever. I don't know where I'm going with that. Uh, the, uh, it just seems like something that always has a dent and something else that's, like, supposed to be indestructible. Right. Yep. Right. Just running into each other. And here we are. There, I mean, some dark matter had to have escaped. <laughs> something, man. The god particle, whatever it is. <laughs> right. Here we are. So, with this um, with this incident happening in the morning, it's just, like, two very unpleasant car things that had to happen in one day, which I'm normally I deal with pleasant car things. So this was just that this just kind of sucked. Yeah, well, um, welcome, welcome to how the other half lives, there, buddy. Yeah, right. Well, so I called the insurance companies and uh, both mine and hers, and uh, they accepted total liability. You know, that's getting covered. I'm gonna find a body shop to get it taken to, and I might even get a rental car for that time. And hell yeah, um, if I if I don't have to get a rental car, and if they can just cut me a check, that'd be tight. I, I've had that happen before. I mean, but if you get a rental car. We can fuck around in a rental car. I know. <clears throat> because what's better than driving your own vehicle at 10 tenths than driving somebody else's vehicle? 
<laughs> Same way. Why do you think I do reviews? <laughs> I don't think we were supposed to tell people that on air. Oops. We're not going to drive your <laughs> well, car we'll, like a we'll, rental car. We'll edit that bit out. Just we'll, cut that bit out. We don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that. This is live. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> we won't drive your car like a rental car. We will drive it with the utmost respect. However. At, at eight tenths. <laughs> however, the fucking Camry that Gavin's going to get is a rental car. Oh, no. That's going to get hooned. Oh, we're going to fucking. Hard. Oh. Or anything that Cole Powell also owns out of the Life Proving Grounds. Yeah, you know. Yes. Just going to throw that out there. Yes. Yes. So. <laughs> anyway. Uh, th- but the issues uh, regarding shaking and all that madness and sadness with mo- with the car uh, came down to a drive shaft that didn't want to be a drive shaft anymore. Okay. It decided it wanted to be a party favor and do wobbly <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. Not quite super gramp stuff, but you know. Not quite, no. So the no. drive shaft wanted to pop out and then they needed to replace the front control arms and the end links to those control arms. Okay. Resulting in $1,700 later. Well, you oh, know. that's it? Yeah. God, I figured 1700 would have been labor. <sighs> it's actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not, not terrible. great. It's not, it's not great, but it's not the worst thing. Well, I, I mean, you had to spend it, so I'm, I'm sure yeah. you're not enthused. I, I, still. Yeah, yeah I'm not, I, I'm, I didn't start shitting money, so. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's happy when that happens. No, but I did, they did give me a cookie, though. Yay! Yeah, like all like all their business transactions. You can buy a car from them, or you can get your work done. At... And they give you a cookie. Well, when you buy a car, they'll give you two cookies. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that's a bonus. Right? <laughs> Got I, I, I've, I've eaten a $15,000 cookie before. Damn. Hey, all right. <laughs> it's one of the little Otis Spunkenmeyer deals where they got the little oven somewhere. Uh, maybe. Uh, those are... well, no, maybe... actually, I think they get them delivered, actually. Ooh. Maybe it's yeah. like how the the Nissan dealership in Orem is, yeah. where like there's this cookie lady that shows up to all the dealerships down yeah. there in University Yeah, I think that's Parkway. what they have. The cookie yeah. lady? Yeah, there's a cookie lady. What? It's just this random lady who, I think she ended up being like the mother of like some service advisor. Is it actually Mrs. Fields? I have no <laughs> idea what her name is. We just always called her Miss Cookie Lady. And she was really right. nice. She was a sweet old lady. She was probably in her 60s or 70s. Well, good. But, I mean, uh, she'd show up in a lifted Tacoma and nice. get out with a giant box of cookies Word. every day and, like, stock the place and then drive Hell away. Yeah. I do believe that uh, for Nate Way, they get, like, deliveries of cookies. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me in the so, slightest. So I did have a cookie after work. That was nice. Well, there um, you go. And, well, I mean, that's a highlight. Yeah. Well, and uh, the real highlight frankly, is the fact that for the incident, I'm not going to pay a dime for. Yeah. And also... Um, Take your time, sweetheart. But I, I'm drawing a blank right now. Okay. Yeah, and also the car got done before I got out of work. Nice. So all I did was take an Uber to from my work, like, eight blocks up to the dealership. And there you go. And then signed papers and drove my car. And actually, it, the car drives great. Good. Oh, it drives drive nice. like it should. It's really nice getting on the freeway, putting load on the you know the car, and not having the brrrr, just like nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's, yeah. It's good shit. Very nice. Well, How was your guys' day? Well, uh, my day was kind of a shit show. Okay. Uh, so elaborate. Uh, so picked up the uh, the the uh, the mini minivan and. Took it for the pre-purchase inspection, and it passed, and the guy's just like, I mean, the tires are okay, but you definitely want to at least rotate them. All right. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, that, that's going to happen, but right now it's, you know. But I right had now to, it's not. Well, it is what it is. Well, I had to do everything, so I picked it up on, the, you know, Thursday because the guy was going out of town on Friday, so I had to, like, get it and all this, sh- you know, get everything done that day. So, and then... My weekend was very busy because it was my brother's birthday. So Saturday night we ended up going to dinner and then going to see uh, Steve Razizi and then all right, nice. Yeah. And then Sunday it was you know I had to come home so we get uh, the bed that my dad was sleeping on in the living room. Yeah, get that out and then go you know have dinner and all that shit because we're celebrating the fact that your dad's a normal human being again. Yes, he still has the multi piece sternum, but that's he's, okay. He's a step closer to being normal again. That's Yay. all right. Yep. Sometimes multi-piece stuff is worth bragging about. It really Look is. at all these people with the hot shit wheels. I was right? going to say three-piece wheels. Yep. Damn. Yeah. But on, uh, so I ended up on Saturday, I picked up uh, front brake rotors, brake pads, 
oil, oil filter, you know, all the stuff to do some real basic maintenance on the car. And I was going to try to get it done this weekend or, you know, at least yesterday as we record this. It was Monday. But, uh, like, I did something to my ankle and it was just kind of bugging me. And then on Monday it was just real bad. So I'm just limping. And it was also snowing and cold. So I was like, I couldn't it do it. It was awful. I, I would have helped you out, but, like, I wasn't going to make it that trip in. Oh, yeah. I figured nobody my, was going to. My car was super sad on Monday, too. Ooh. So I was just like, mm. Yeah, I figured I was not going to get much help. Yeah. So I just kind of scrapped everything. However... Uh, my bum ankle did not trump my dad's multi-piece sternum, so I did have to go clear the driveway. Yeah. So my ass is just out there limping around. Mm. Mm. But I take it you don't have a snow plow <laughs> or a snow blower. We do. Oh, you do? We do. That but, makes uh, it a lot easier. So I live on a private lane, and, uh, you know, the guy who owns the private lane, he has, you know, like a 2500 Silverado with a plow on it, and he'll come and he'll plow the street, you know, once or twice a day when it's snowy. Um, so he came by earlier, plowed it, and everything was okay, but it was wet, so, you know, like, there's a little bit of ice, and then right. it snowed some more. So yeah. I'm out there trying to, like... Which is worse. ...blow the snow and, you know, slipping around. It's just not good. That's rough. Not good. Um, what kind of footwear do you have for stuff like that? I have boots, but I was not going to be getting into them. Why not? Not with a bum ankle. Yeah, ankle really? did not want to get didn't in the boots. Didn't want it? Nope. So what were you using? Uh, I was just wearing my regular ass sneakers. Oh. Not ideal. That is less than ideal. I am I am well aware that it was not a good decision. Yeah. But whatever. So. Hashtag thoughts and prayers. Right? So. I um, have to pay respects. Mm. Put some respect on my name. Sad react only. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Put some respect on my name. <laughs> anyway. So. Uh, ended up not doing any of the maintenance, any of that shit, and then, you know, go to sleep last night, streets reasonably clear, we put salt out, we did all that shit. Yeah. And then it snowed like another three inches overnight. Yeah. So, <laughs> here I am, I'm waking up, I'm making my breakfast sandwich, I'm getting ready to go, I'm like, alright, it's gonna take five minutes to make, go out there, shovel behind the mini minivan, brush it off, get everything ready to go, yeah. you know, pop the new dash cam in there. Yeah, you got a yee, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, I'm interested in this one. And you sent me the link. It's cheap, too. It's like, it's 50, like 50 bucks. bucks. What? Yeah. 50 yeah. Bucks and, yeah it's, and it's got a screen. Yeah. yeah. It does, I want to like, play with it. Yeah. yeah. It, it does some cool things. However, uh, so I get I get my breakfast sandwich. I get my lunch. I get my big green canteen that you see me drinking up out of when I'm out at the track. Yep. And my fucking travel mug, trying to get all this stuff into the van, get it in there. And I go to back out, and everything's okay, and then I try to turn up the street, and it's not going. Just spin and tire? Oh, yeah. Do you have traction control on that? Yes, I do. And it's just not working? Or I mean, it's... you turned it off? Uh, no, it was it was on, but it's just like, the, you know, it's just not wanting to do anything of any sort of usefulness. Interesting. Okay. Like, the light's blinking at me. It's like, I'm... But you're still spinning tire. Yeah, it's just like, I'm trying everything I can, dude. So... Giving it all I got, Captain. Exactly. We just can't do it, Captain. We do it. Have the power. Yep. So. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So pull the car back in. Oh, and also on my street, with the exception of me, my neighbors, who we share a wall with, and one person, like, the house kitty corner to us, every house is an Airbnb, and every house is rented right now. Yeah. So Tis the season. Yes. So they all have, like, fucking giant SUVs or trucks that they rented. Yeah. So when I get out there, I notice that there are already just well-worn tracks in the snow. So you decide to take those? Uh, no, because I know that that is effectively a sheet of ice at this point mm -hmm. with very little grip. Yep. Yeah, so I, I try to, like, you know, plow into the street, get some, you know, no nothing. Get some traction with the snow or... like there, Yeah, there's nothing. So I end up spending, like, an hour and a half just, like, shoveling, putting stuff down, everything... Yeah. To try to get off of my goddamn street. I told my boss I probably wasn't going to make it because I got stuck getting back into my driveway. Nice. Yep. So, and he, he informs me that uh, I can show up late because we have a shit ton of work and there are two people already gone. So, that was fun. What, what a guy. Yep. Delightful. So, yeah, spent an um, hour and a half killing myself for a $20,000 a year job. Not, yeah. That's not a recipe for success, kids. What, and no. What ended up happening was uh, my mom woke up, and she came out, and she saw me, you know, huffing and puffing and, you know, trying to get this little thing out, and, uh, you know, she had to work today, but she ended up letting me borrow her Rogue. 
Aww. Yeah, so I backed the thing out. I locked it in all-wheel drive, so it was 50-50 torque split. Wait, you'd lock it in those? You yeah, can. the Rogue has a very, very trick feature where it's, you can lock yeah. the center disc. Is it so. front? Is it front-wheel drive bias? It's and front then, bias yep. until you lock it in. No, it's 50-50. And then it's yeah. a four-wheel drive high. Yeah, it's a single-speed transfer case. Yep. Right. It, it basically does everything the new Cherokee does better and from Japan. Yep. Well, I mean, the Cherokees are, <clears throat> well, garbage. That's neither here nor there right now. Yes. But yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I ended up taking that thing, and I had to lock it in all-wheel drive when I got onto State Street, because it was a fucking shit show. Oh, I bet. Oh, yeah, northbound, like, the lanes were clear, but it was just backed up. Southbound, like, the plow hadn't been by in some time. So. So it made things interesting. Yes, it did. <laughs> so I pulled into work a solid hour and a half late, and then. No uh, big deal, though, right? Because they asked you to come in. I mean, he told me I, you know, basically it was a thing that had to happen. And then, you know, so I got to work about 8.30, 8.45. I realized that I spent all that, I wasted a bunch of time just to come to this job where it's fairly thankless and, uh, you know, yeah. depressing. Yeah. And I wanted to go and cry. But whatever. Been there. Yep. Been but there. it's okay because... On that same note, listeners, if you would like to make Mike no longer cry, we would love to take your <laughs> donations. <laughs> yeah, we would love... I mean, if you want to advertise with us, please, do hit us up. A, do we have a Patreon yet? We do have a Patreon. I think we're working on it. We're, it's, it's there, but we haven't... Like, it, whatever, we'll talk, about the, we'll talk about this later. Talk about this after we're done here. But, Word. Yep. But, um, yeah, so that was my day, and now I'm trying to figure out, so over the next couple of days because Friday after work whenever the hell that is me and the girlfriend are driving down to St. George nice yep get 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 some sun rays catch some sun rays get some heat gonna try gonna... How, how warm is it right down there right now is it 60s still it's gotta be in the 60s well, yeah I mean at minimum hold on hold that thought I'll find out yeah but um yeah but before we go, I at least need to change the oil in that thing. So yeah. that's going to be a, a thing to do. And uh, I would love to do the brakes, but I think that's a project I'm willing to wait until. How about, or how, what's the condition of the brakes right now? Uh, just looking at them, I feel as though they need something done. How, how do they feel? Uh, that They're there. You, you find them eventually. Are they better than that LS that we drove? Oh, God, that <laughs> LS. Every LS that I drove was just one of those, like, I mean. There are brakes here. You just got to find them. <laughs> like these, like it's not a spongy pedal. It's, you know, it's solid. It's there. But it's like you hit it and it's like, come on. I can feel you starting to slow down. Yeah. Like thankfully it works in a panic situation because I've had to do that a few times because, you know, people don't understand that you don't come to a dead stop in a lane of traffic for no good reason. Wait, you don't? I mean, typically if you want to have the uh -huh. rear of your car in one piece. Interesting. You know. Huh. So. Never thought of that. Uh, you know. It's just a <laughs> just a handy life tip there. But, Gee, uh, I never knew. Right? Yeah, right? Uh, so, but uh, yeah, that's been my day, and it's going to be my week moving forward, so. Well, well by the way, St. George has uh, highs in the mid-40s. It's yeah. going to be 50 on Sunday, 54 on Monday. Okay. Yep. Not too terrible. Uh, that Not makes awful. sense with this whole cold front coming through. Yeah. Like, it, if you look at some of the, like, the maps, you can see just this huge cold thing just dipping way yeah. the fuck down. Yeah. So, well, that's always fun. Well, hope your week gets better, Mike. Thanks, Gavin. Um, I'm glad your car is much better than it was. It is much better than it was, yeah. I'm actually Good. looking forward to taking it on freeways Good. now. Good. <laughs> it, it needs an alignment. Um, it's oh. still, I still feel a little bit of vibration, but that's yeah. just element alignment. Yeah, that's... Thing. Yeah, I uh, the van needs an alignment, or if you just got like a wheel just a little bit out of balance because it's got the. Hey, Scott. Scotty, hook some brothers up, yo! Come on, dude. Scott Michael Chamberlain, hook it. Hook it yep. up. Anyway, word. Dave, how was you? How have you been? I, I've been good. Good. This weekend, I, I moved the lady friend into a. a oh new yeah, place. how's that? That's good. That's good. She's where you guys at, up. or where's she at? Uh, Riverton. Okay. Not, or sorry, not Riverton. That's where she moved from. Uh, Riverton Harriman area. She's now in uh, South Jordan. Okay, cool. So, Very nice. Super cool. Yeah, I didn't do anything besides that. Cool. I woke up this morning and went to work. Cool. I feel you. I built yeah. some countertops and now I'm here. Nice. Eating some saw, drinking some brews with my boys. I was going to say, like we, we've had a similar weekend. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you and your lady friend were moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. S- well, you guys were condensing. You were going from two to one. Yeah, and we. Assembled. I was just moving her from one to two. We assembled all the IKEA things. No. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. I don't know, guys. Like everybody says, this IKEA shit's super hard, and I, dude, it's it's not hard. It's no. just infuriating. It's, it's not. I mean, I guess maybe it's because I own Volvos. I'd, <laughs> well, I don't know. No, I could it, take my entire two forty apart with. Like, you're you're just used six to Swedish Allen. things. Well, yeah. like it's not even like putting it together. It's. It's doing it with somebody else who feels that they have a completely different and better way of doing it. That's the that's problem. That, that, that's a lot of it. Isn't that what relationships are about? Yeah. It's about being a team. It's a it's a unified if, front. If, if, if you can become a team and, as Mike puts it, a unified front. <laughs> yes. To, to, to complete a task. It is you and your significant other. Or Tinder pickup, or whatever, <laughs> against the world We're coming together judging. as one, or their family, or whatever. Yeah, you know, or your own family. Who knows? I don't know your life. I don't presume to know shit about you. I'd like to know more about you. Feel free to drop us a line. Mailbag at camautomag dot com. Hey, Camautomag on all social media. Fucking segues. That was you know. smooth. Yep. Mm-mm. Yep. Ooh, baby. All right. Well, gentlemen. Let us jump into this agenda. Yeah. With, uh, shout out to the Camp Shenanigans crew uh, helping me out with this because uh, my fucking weekend and day prevented me from actually doing this shit. Hey, that's okay. We got a bunch of bangers on this this agenda. Damn right. Yeah, we got some good responses for um, the question, too. Yes, we did. So first off, I'd like to start off with a casual selling out from Dan. The 24 Hours of Love finally sells out and has an official tire sponsor. Oh, no. Wait, no, this is good. It's Yokohama. Hey, all right. Yeah, right? He's still going to run Falcons, though, right? Yes, he is. Okay, cool. Yes, he the is. The RT615K is one hell of a tire, especially on a budget. Damn right it is. So, yeah, this this was on uh, Auto Week. Yeah, they sold out to the man. Oh, okay. Let's see. Yeah, For a like, second, I thought that was Dan. Dan's words of that they sold out. Nope. This is uh yeah this is in the uh, the auto week story which is you know so far so good. Uh, let's it see. seems a little sensational to me. It really it's just kind of, I mean, whatever. It's just it's just one of those I'm trying to be weird and like I'm trying to do a uh, a Magnus style press release thing, but not being Magnus. Okay yeah cool whatever that's uh, functionally useless you got what you needed to say, got what we needed. So, Chirp dropped in a bunch of stuff that I kind of want to run over real quick. All uh, right. Chirp. Yeah, shout out to Chirp. Uh, we were going to try and call him when it was looking like uh, Kevin wasn't going to be here. So. Oh, you were going to do that today? We were going to try that, but uh, uh, no. Uh, Tuesdays are hit and miss for him, so at some point we will call him. Word. Yep. And we have love him, you, Chirp. Really, we do. And have him shout at us, because that's what he does best. Yes. Yep. He gets really good at shouting when he's drunk. (laughs) He's really good at it when he's sober. (laughs) Oh, God. Bless that man. Right. So, anyway, uh, he wanted to know everybody's uh, spring and summer plans. So, like, you know, car shows, events, races, you know. Fuck shit up. Yeah, uh, Chirps wanting to go to uh, SEMA. He says he's in. He was in last time, but uh, Mm -hmm. I think... Circumstances well, prevented him from showing up. Which, yeah, to be fair, it was a family oh, thing for him. So yeah, it yeah, not a not the kind of family thing you want. New, no. not hey everybody, we're going on this sweet ass European vacation. Yeah, yeah, that's that that would be ideal if that yeah. was the case. Unfortunately, it was not. Tragically, but chirp. We're going to have you next year. It's going to be good. Yes, it will be delightful. Shenanigans will be had. Lit. Yup. So Lit AF fam. Oh yeah. So, like, uh, races and stuff. Um, I mean, World Challenge is definitely something that at least I think me and Gavin are going to be hitting up. Definitely. Yeah. I, I really want to go to Radwood in December. Radwood would be dope. Hit up my buddy Bradley Brownell. Yeah. Radwood is definitely something that I'm looking into. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't see. know if I'm going to make it work, but I want to try. I want to twist Dan Chalinski's arm and letting me drive his cozy, and yeah. he, he can drive the wagon down. There we go. And right. then Pizza Dad can drive his thing down. And then it'll be me and Dave in the van. Yes. I'm in. Hell yeah. Let's fucking do it. All right, I'm down. Um, yeah, Radwood's a thing. Um, 
if there's a Tinner's meet this year, I think we're definitely going to go to that. There is going to be one. Good. It's not announced yet. But um, I'm pretty sure uh, the GK guys, Grouch Kusha, I think they're going to have a little something together too. So Cool. Yeah. That's going to be pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, is LS Fest going to be a thing? LS Fest West, okay. uh, yeah. May 1st through, f- or, uh, yeah, sorry, 4th through 6th All this right. year. Yeah. Word. Um, I'm definitely going. Yeah. So I would expect nothing less from you. Right. Uh, yeah. Last year was the first year. That was a good one. I enjoyed yep. it. Yep. Uh, now that I know kind of what's going on with it, and now they kind of know what's going on with it, it's going to be a good one. Cool. Second Even one's better. Gonna be one to watch. Yeah. I think that's definitely going to be something I'm going to try to go to. I'm also going to try to hit like some Vegas drift events. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. You know. But we got some boys down there. Yep. So. Ian Perry and such. Uh, Ian Blaze. Yeah. Jason D. Smith. Yup. The OG Mayor McCheese. Yeah. Is that what we call him? So I call him the OG Mayor McCheese because on his Civic, you remember that K-Swap Civic that he had? I do. He had, you know, his name and then the Mexican flag and also the McDonald's thing next to his name. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I started calling him Mayor McCheese because, you know, that's that was the joke that came to mind. It's what you do. Damn right. So... Yeah, that was, you know, a thing. But, uh, yeah, he's down there with his uh, 5 swapped uh, E36. Nice. That's right. Still thrashing. Yeah. Nice. Still getting work done. Yeah, that hunk of garbage. Uh, Ian Perry and his uh, whatever trash pile he's got. It's either the Corolla or the Z. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Blaze and some of the other scoundrels and, you know, the Pumpkin King and whatever other shit boxes they get down there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I know our boy Chase. From uh, Scoundrels Media. Oh yeah, he's got the uh, the five O F C Coop project. Yeah, completed God. or quote end quote completed. I mean, I just love the way the car looks. Should. I could care less what's under the hood, but still. Uh yeah. Go back and listen to uh, the Sunday Funday podcast we did with the Scoundrels, where we can you can hear Chase talk about that. You can also hear me and a uh, stepdad Barnes just cranking beers, like you do on a Sunday morning. Like you do. Fucking yep. ch- breakfast of champions right here. Damn right. <laughs> Massive burnouts and blazes uh, LSFC. Oh, those are those are the days. Indeed, good times. Yep. Good times. Yep. Uh, let's see, car shows. I mean, talked about Radwood. There's Radwood. Uh, the only ones locally I really kind of care about is... Um, I mean, I, I care about the Park City Cars and Coffees. Yeah, I want to... Um, that's cool. Those have been fairly... Um, um, I need to get me up to one of those. You should. Same. I, yeah. I you went to one, didn't you? I did. I I showed up with you and Christian for one. Did you roll, roll with Christian? Roll no, I drove Christian. up myself. Okay. I I rolled in with you and Christian. Oh, okay. For the listener at home, this information is hitting Gavin as if it is new. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember you being there, and uh, that's what apparently it, that's he what doesn't you got the Miata cart there. <laughs> yeah, that was the day. It was the day after I I picked up the Miata cart. Yeah, nice. that's right. Yeah, so, and those have always been, like, low drama. Yeah, I mean, it's just... The People not do, being stupid, doing burnouts and whatever. It's like, and I wonder if it's just a regional thing, of like, people coming up to Park City and, like, being on their best behavior, not wanting to do dumb shit in a really beautiful area. I mean, maybe. I, 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 I feel like the same thing kind of applies with a lot of the Southern California cars and coffees. Because there's yeah. really not a lot of drama at any of those places. Yeah, either. I think but car, then again, cars also... there are more sacred. Like that car culture is very yeah. different. Well, yeah, there it's it's a lot more respected. Yes, I think that's what I was trying to say. Well, and I don't also, know, it's higher caliber. And well, and also people are going out at six and seven in the morning. Yeah, not right. like strolling out at nine. Right. Waking up at the crack of eleven thirty. <laughs> now you're singing my sweet praises. Mm-hmm. Oh dear God, I've been waking up at six. A.M. way too long for work. I My sleeping in is like 7.30. It is a sad existence I live. Unfortunately, I feel your pain. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, other shows. Um, so, I registered for media for StanceCon. They got my $10, so unfortunately Ooh. I'm doing that. Uh, that's the one that's indoors at the convention center, right? Yep. At the formerly Southtown, I think it's the Mountain America Credit Union Expo Center now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yep. That's the one on like State Street, like 90-something. Yeah, right by uh, Jordan Commons. Yeah. 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 Yep. So Funny they changed the name. It's still a county-owned operation. Yep. Yeah. You know. yeah, I don't know. Somebody just said, hey, here's a little bunch of money. Change the name. Naming rights, people. Naming rights. I mean, that's the Put thing. Put our name on the front. You know, like yep. the uh, like the E Center Maverick Center, or the uh, Delta Center Energy Solutions Arena, Vivint Smart Home Arena. Yep. Yeah. 
Exactly. <laughs> that. <laughs> that one. That, that thing. Yeah, those things. But yeah, uh, let's see. Elite Tuner is doing an event like a couple blocks from my house. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, our buddy Alex, our buddies Alex Presop and uh, Jeff Woodyett, they got approved to be in there, so. Alex, let me shoot your car. Uh, it, Damn let, it. Let us do stuff with your car. I want to do things. Yeah. That involve your car. Yup. Yes, that. Anyway. So where are they doing that? Um, you know that movie theater on uh, 13th East and like 78th South? Yes. Oh, the Century up there on uh, up yeah. in the, yeah, the, that, the Fort Union. Yep. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the parking garage right behind it. Oh, oh sick. Cool. cool. That's yeah. super cool. Yeah. So uh, there's that. Um, obviously, ISS, maybe Scrape Fest. I mean, these are things that I'm hitting up. Right. I'll likely go to the Scrape Fest opening, not because I want to, but because I have to. Yeah. I mean, I'll go to ISS. Yeah. ISS is not a bad time. No. No. So. But yeah, I mean, I'll be uh, we'll be throwing shade at Scrape Fest, also known as Vape Fest. Oh yeah, yeah. My clouds are perfect. Uh, <laughs> my clouds are big. Shout out to Nick Pressure for sending me that meme. <laughs> that was great. Uh, uh, no, I mean, what I'm looking forward to 2016. It doesn't really have to do with car shows or events or anything like that, but just kind of enjoying myself. And um, making dope content. Yeah. Um, I want to drive things. Do, 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 you want, do you want to talk about some ideas that we have rolling around Let's our talk head? about some ideas that we got kicking around in our head. Well, um, I've recently become acquainted with uh, a couple that own a couple fun cars, one of which is a... a is it an Imola Yellow? Is that, are they still calling it that? Uh, TTRS. It's the brand new third gen uh, with like the virtual cockpit and the... It's, it still has the 07K turbo five cylinder DSG. Nice. Um, actually, we might be doing some things with that car as a demo car for IE. Hell yeah! We don't ha- like we've been doing things with the RS3, but we don't know if anything's different between those two platforms. So, so even though they are still like five cylinder MQB stuff. Nice. Your beard actually. Yep. Oh, you dropped it. Your your beard caught like a pepper. It's all right. It's amazing. Uh, anyway, that same couple also uh, bought a uh, GT350, and uh, a lot of kind of what went wrong last year is there was a uh, conflict of interest between making content for Cam and making content for Moto Networks, and upon when that happened uh, is when I want, was making the GT350 piece with uh, this individual last year. And um, because we kind of had to keep on, like, rescheduling shoots and doing secondary shoot days, and I lost footage because files got corrupted, is, and uh, he, yeah, he doesn't like me now. So um, we're going to this new person, these new people. And I, so I want to do GT350 and uh, Camaro 1LE. We might know people with the Camaro 1LE. We might know a guy. We, we, we have a lead, as yes, it were. Yes, we do. So that's ha- that might be happening. Um I also want to do more things with my buddy Bradley Lystrip with his uh, 991 Turbo Cab. Bradley, if you're listening, hi. Hello. Hi, Brad. He, he's a good buddy of mine. He's in the car club. Um, cool. Might be doing some things with him. And uh, what I would like to do is go like have a big old play date with like him and like the TTRS GT350 people and go out with my buddy Ramsey who has – some fine uh, automobiles as well, um, and kind of just have a big old play date in, like, Wolf Creek or something. Or, like, if we really want to take the day, like, go up to Nebo and, like... Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, oh, yeah. like, That's really a... commit to, like, a 40-mile stretch of awesome road. It'd be a hell of a day. Yeah, so I want to fill up my days this summer with the, with as much of that as possible. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I mean, it's a good goal to have. Right? I think, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so... And, uh, yeah, look forward to uh, content coming from us, ladies and gents. Yeah. I mean, in addition to, uh, you know, that kind of, like, head-to-head shootout kind of Comparo stuff. We're going to be doing some of that. I want to get together with uh, our, our friends that make some models and do some shenanigans with the, with them. Yeah. Kind of more of a vloggy style probably with that. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, a, a mashup of, like, you know, daily transmissions and Stradman and Matt Farah one take and everyday driver and like kind of all these influences is coming into a big melting pot. Yeah. And 
you know, what I'm kind of working on doing is uh, talking to a, a friend of ours. Talk, yes. Trying to uh, come up with a little narrative thing, like actually write yes. out a little story and shoot it. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to be borrowing uh, a car. Uh, yep. And uh, Something it, that, uh, well, let, let me say this. the key It shares a key fob with the Maxima. Yep. Uh, think, That's all we'll say. Yeah, it's it's going to be a delightful farce. Think of like a kind of a low rent Coen Brothers film. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So I mean, that's going to be happening. I'm going to be trying to do more bro cam adventure stuff. Yeah. Yep. Maybe publishing some uh, dash cam from the Yi. Yeah. I mean, it kind of feel like Soviet Russia all over again. Oh God, I hope not. But I hope mean, not. That would be hilarious if it was, though. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, we're just going to try and get out there. I'm going to try and get out there and do some more, you know, like, just, I'm here doing a thing. Here's some stuff from this thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just like, and, you know, maybe uh, I got a couple of weird ideas that I think would be uh, delightful. And I know Trent's got some ideas that, uh, you know, they've got, like, they're not terrible ideas. Yeah. They're not. We got we to gotta work some kinks out first. Exactly. Much like with my, uh, I'm on, like, draft two of this whole, like, even not even, like, the script or anything like outline of the thing I'm trying to do. I've already got right. like something wadded up and thrown in a corner. It's like that's not gonna fucking work. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's just one of those things. Like yeah, you know, I mean, there there are some fun ideas, and God, I hope we can actually get some of them going. Right, because especially one of them I think would be great. So, but yeah, and then so chirp. Being up in the Pacific Northwest, you know, when he asks about races, he specifically mentions uh, the Portland International Speedway for Indy and their triumphant return to Portland ooh. to the Rose City. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we may. Uh, d- I got to double check the schedule, see when that is, but you know, may may uh, throw the kids in the back of the van. Yes. Yep. Oh, actually, that's something I'm looking forward to uh, this year, this summer, is using your car as a camera support vehicle. Yeah. And, like, stealing my company's uh, Rog- Ronin, the, our rig, yeah. and using yeah. that for shenanigans. Oh, yeah. like I like the idea of this. Yeah. There, yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there are many, many ways that I, like, many reasons I picked up the van. How much room, like, when you open up the tailgate of it, like, how much, like, vertical is there? Like, it's, it's fairly tall. Like, the... Yeah. the floor is pretty deep. In like, would I be able to comfortably, like, sit, like, ass down on the floor? You should and, be. And, like, like, would my head hit the ceiling? Mm, you should probably be. Probably not. Well, after this, we'll go, we'll get out there and we'll have you, like, play around in there. Dave, you should film this. While, okay. While, I, while yeah. I do this. Okay. And Mike crams me in his yeah. Mazda 5. I'll film yep. it. I'll film it with the new iPhone X. Ooh. Damn, boy. Yeah. Damn, son. Get fit straight. Hell yeah. Fronting on us. Yeah, dog. Stunting on our ass. Here I am with my SE just feeling fucking poor. I mean, I was feeling real poor with my 5S, and then it stopped charging, and I kind of was forced. (laughs) And then then things happened. Yeah, your arm was twisted. I accidentally had to become a baller. Mm. (laughs) Damn. Where are your gold chains at, son? I know, right? (sighs) No, honestly, though, when I got this phone, I got the tablet both unlimited services and nice. like it cut my bill like in half. Oh my god. I had really? some I had some like ancient data plan. Yeah. Wow. They were like, dude, you're paying like for two whole accounts right now. Like why are you doing this? Yeah, they're like, yeah. what are you doing? Why why is it why is your life gone so wrong? That. Oh, yeah, that. Exactly. Verbatim. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, so anywho. Yeah, so there Moving we go. Forward. Yeah, so there's that. Uh projects we kinda talked about my van, uh, Chirp, his Fox body, uh, needs batteries need to be charged or replaced, and then it's off to get plates. Is it still eating water pumps? Because last time we talked, it was eating water pumps. Probably. Whatever. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dave's fleet, don't get me started. Yeah, I'm not even going like, to. No. Pretty much everything's for sale right now. I'm keeping a handful, but. Hit him up. Well, I mean, the problem is nobody's nobody's hitting me up, and the people that hit me up don't want to come anywhere close to my asking prices no. yeah. which i feel are more than fair yeah, yeah. so like I, I will i will sell my turbo volvo like tonight for a thousand dollars so hit me up yeah so there you go so if, there it is if it's you're a project but it's a turbo swapped volvo if you're listening but bro will you take 300 
I mean, I'll take 300 and sell you the turbo that's on it. Damn. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep the rest of the car. There we go. Let's see. Uh, nice. Next up on the project list is uh, Gavin's dollhouse. What? It's running. Uh, Dad's empty beer bottle collection. I, uh, dollhouse? Wait, hold on. I don't know what he means. He's just being fucking... Who, he's, who added this? Chirp. Oh. Yeah. So let's see. And then, well, uh, okay then. Does yeah. that mean like the place I just moved into? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, no, it's great. Everything's moved in, unpacked, organized. Constructed. Um, Unless dollhouse is some new slang for an outback wagon that you it, and I are not aware of. Right. Th- that might be. Uh, in which case, my dollhouse is just fine. Thanks for asking, chirp. May, I mean, maybe Damn, dollhouse because they're like lesbians drive outbacks and girls and stuff. I don't know. Okay. I'm, cool. I, I'm really stretching there, though. Yeah, Chirp, what I, the fuck do you mean? I know, right? Clarity, God. Dude. Anyway, uh, yeah, then Dad's empty beer bottle collection. Uh, no, Dad is sick at home. Yep. Just grinding yeah. farts into his couch. They they aren't beer bottles. Those are like Dimatat bottles. Yeah. <laughs> He's sipping on the scissor. Yep, that Sip, he is. Sipping on, sipping on that scissor. Sipping on, on Orphan that. Tears. Damn, mm-hmm. son. Nice. So <laughs> now, wow. Yep. Now jumping into uh, the next uh, bit of stuff uh, from Trent. So Trent from Sandy. Trent from Sandy. Going. Trent from Sandy. So the first two things are uh, the uh, so the uh, Alpha Sauber F1 car and then the Red Bull the their testing livery, which just looks fucking dope. So what I have done Is that here. That white one. No, I'm oh, going what to. Happened? So here's what we got. I saw something recently. So here are the five cars that have been released. So we've got the uh, the Sauber Alfa Romeo. Yeah, that's that one. It's looking pretty good. Yep, and tasty. Then, yep. And then we've got this is the the Red Bull. They're testing, but it's oh, blue. The, the Red Bull Aston car, but it's blue. The yeah. Camel Bull. Yeah, the with the it's weird. Not, it's not red. Camel. It's blue. Yeah, doesn't matter because it looks dope. I Agreed. think they should keep that. This I, is a temporary livery for them, isn't it? Yeah, this is the. They say the race livery is going to be on at the Barcelona test, which is disappointing because this is just so much cooler than the regular Red Bull livery. Man, yeah, they should. I, they I like what they got going that. on there. Yeah. Right, it's so good. And then let's see. Here's the Renault. It feels very French. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it matches the tire selection. It, it <laughs> doesn't <laughs> look bad. Really. I so, mean, like if they added a couple more stripes in that, I would call it the Slav Renault. Damn, son. That that has a very Slavic feel to it. Yeah. So let's see. Then we've got Williams. Oh, hey, okay. Yeah. Damn, son. A little, little, little bit of a vintage throwback to the Martini Splash. Uh, they've been doing the Martini for, like, that's been their livery for years. Yeah. My problem it. is all I of this. Everything down on the bottom being black now. It like, disappears. It's, it's unfinished. Like, that's what it looks like to me. Um, I mean, okay. I can uh, see that. It looks like they got to a point and they're like, yep, we're done. Time to go home. And then, uh, I want to go home. And then Haas, the starter livery from F from whatever F one game that you're playing in story mode. Yeah, that looks very uh, basic. Yeah, I it, mean, are they trying a minimalist approach here? Or? I, they, it looks like it wears Uggs and goes to Starbucks and gets pumpkin spice lattes. And you fire up the game. Damn. You fire up the game. You put in your driver's name, but you are never addressed by your name because <laughs> the game can't figure out how to say your name. <laughs> It's always, hey, you, or with the face, you need to get to grid. Whatever. I will say they did a pretty decent job of hiding the safety thong. Yeah, they certainly did. Yep. So, yeah, there are pretty, I mean. Not looking too bad. Everybody else so far has had a body color. Yeah, yeah. everyone well, else is with, kind of just with embracing With the exception it. of Aston. Aston left there's black as well. Yeah, Red Bull left there's black. Yeah, I mean, it's everybody's trying to do their best. The to, Renault being black, that just makes sense. Yeah. So the rest of the cars are basically black. Yep. Yeah, black and yellow, the team colors. I, can't, I just can't get over the fact that this is whole under thing is still... I really hope they're doing something. I hope when they get to the test, they'll be like, aha, and they rip it away. That would be tight. But wait, there's more. God, I, I mean, hope. yeah. I, God, I hope so. <laughs> and then, God, I hope Haas gets some more sponsors, because this is just <laughs> sad. <laughs> this is very sad looking. Still a blank canvas, really. Yep. So, um... Yeah, we are recording this on Tuesday the 20th, so I think by the time you hear this, there may be some more liveries announced. I can't remember. But, yeah, so there we go. I think we're all in agreement that uh, 
the Red Bull should keep that testing livery as their main livery throughout the season. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a good-looking car. Agreed. Oh, yeah. So, let's see. Something about unions. Yeah, the UAW. Oh, uh, yes. So, oh, uh, yes, union scandal, therefore, here we are. Let's see. Da, 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 da. So apparently they spent, what was it, millions on personal items while they had already weakened bargaining positions as companies move factories south, you know, where the governor's crooked and they don't have unions. Right. Yep. Uh, the big question is, will they survive? I mean, I'll, they've been around this long, so I don't see why not. Da, 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 da. Yeah, okay, I'm, uh, that's that's mighty wordy for me. But basically what this is saying is that there is a $4.5 million scandal that has been uncovered that a lot of UAW executives have been kind of padding their own pockets instead of spending this money on uh, training and support and uh, fighting the good fight, as it were. So it's a union racket. So it's a union racket. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Glad we took the long way to get here. Yeah. Well, I mean, here we are. Here we are. High road, low road, back road, doesn't matter. Yep. There it is. And let's see, Ferrari's launching a thing, the 488 Pista. What? Ferrari's launching a thing in Geneva, the 488 Pista. I'm sorry, what? Pista, that's Italian for track, right? That's a thing. So is that supposed to be like a speciale? 711 horsepower 488. Probably. Yep, it's official. So, okay, that's great, but will it uh, give me a uh, Slurpee, though? Um, I doubt it. But, has you know, anything Italian ever given you a Slurpee? Well, it's making 711 horsepower. Zing. Wow. Uh, God damn it. Wow. You, you keep I your... will be here not all night, but for maybe another you hour keep so. your finger guns holstered, mister. It was right there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the hell are we going to do with you? Uh, I don't know. So, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pista, 711 horsepower, 568 pound-feet of torque, 200 pounds lighter than a standard 488. And it appears to have a very similar livery, or at least stripes, uh, to like the 488 Speciale and yeah. I guess the 360? Something like that, yeah. I mean, the, the 360 Strad. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, no, more more similar to the four five eight. Yeah, so LA, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. What does pista actually mean? Does it mean track? It, it literally means track. It does. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were being snarky no. or sarcastic. No, no, no. It, no, it, it yeah. literally means so, track. Sometimes it's hard to tell with sometimes. you, Dave. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so because you can't tell with the voice. Well, because okay, so I guess speciale is special. Yes. But so it's with four five eight, and then you go back to three or sorry F four thirty. Was there a special edition F430? I mean, the Scud. Oh, yeah, the Scuderia, which is t- right. which means team. Right. And then uh, back at 360, there's Stradale, which is something. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure what a- that means. A- apparently, this was supposed to be, uh, or I guess this was on track to be called the 488 GTO. Well, that's what I Yeah, was- yeah, I heard word so, about that about a year ago. Everybody was saying that Six that months was- to a year ago, people yeah. were talking about a potential GTO. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'm kind of glad it's... Not a GTO, right? Considering this, this is well, basically Ferrari, a warmed over GTB with a bunch of trick stuff. Well, yeah, and Ferrari yeah. kind of uh, they, they they fucked with the GTO name when they made the five nine nine GTO, yeah, right, and that didn't quite live up to the hype or the, like, or the um, the glory of the two eighty eight, right? Yeah. GTO, a lot a lot of uh, classic Ferrari yep. enthusiasts were a little bit displeased, yeah, for good reason. I suppose I, I, I understand. I guess I'm not a Ferrari man myself, but. Which is surprising. Why is that surprising? I don't know. I just feel like you like the... I like supercars. The prancing horse, yeah. I like them. I mean, I've, fair. The only one I've driven was kind of falling apart when I drove it. <laughs> I guess like most of them. So I guess that's a pretty authentic Ferrari experience. I mean, experience. I, feel, I feel like they're they're like older Harleys. For like every three hours of drive time or ride yeah. time, there's like an hour of wrench time. See, yeah. like I, I just want to drive like a 458 or, or a 488 or even a 430. Uh, yeah. I want to get fun. that era of car, that experience. Yeah. No, it was a cappuccino. Sorry. Tight. Oh. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, Something. it was a cappuccino on that. Can, can we uh, rewind a little bit there? Uh, Probably not. I don't. The know moment where, is past. I don't know where I put the controller. 
but whatever. Oh, it's okay. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Well, what's this thing? Hey, oh, hey look, another one. one. It's another cappuccino. Tight. Yeah. There's two of them. Hell yeah. Another one. Another one. All right. Another one. All right, call it. Calm down. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so. Wow. Yep. So, uh, Dave, throwing down with several things. I, I, I threw some I threw some shit in here. Yes, you did. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? I, I found it all online. Ooh. Internet. Yep. Yeah. Actually, so, I mean, a, a lot of my stuff I end up finding on Jalopnik. Um, yeah, yeah, no, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good media source. They're yeah. usually on top of it. Yeah. We're weekly. They're daily. I mean, hell, they're hourly. Yeah, they are. They're minutely good, sometimes. Good God, man. Yeah. Are you hourly? I mean... <laughs> Anyhow, so, wow, sorry. Dave. So, yeah. Wow. So we were talking last week about the Daytona 500. Yes. Uh, that was a thing. That yeah. happened. Yes. It did, it, yes. Uh, it, and ma- it was a smash and grab. It was a shit show. What, I, 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 I caught the last happened. half of it at uh, a wing nuts. Uh, so I was becoming more and more intoxicated the longer the race ran. Sure, I, yeah. How much I, of the race did you catch that? I actually ca- caught the last, like, 60 laps. Not bad. Dude, so, I, not bad. That's pretty good. I had Chirp airing his grievances at me <laughs> via text. Well, I mean, Chirp airs his grievances at a, a, a lot of things. Yes. Nicholas Chirp, 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 Chirpesky, or however you There say you that go. Boy. There, there you there go. go. Sound it out. <laughs> where, where every day is Festivus. <laughs> Gold star. Damn right. It's coming with that <laughs> aluminum pole, boy. <laughs> so, uh, so, so the first thing that I, because I, I only watched the last, like, ten laps. Yeah, well, I mean, you, aside from the, the the big wrecks, you pretty much caught the rest of it. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the first stage, that big wreck taking out some serious contenders. There was, uh, yeah. Because it was like Jimmy Johnson, Daniel Suarez. There were a lot uh, of big names that ended up in the middle of that. Yep. And it was it was a mess. Um, sparks everywhere, obviously. Stage racing, people. It's yeah. going to save the sport. Well, I mean, it's been working out, I think. I mean, last year I didn't pay much attention to NASCAR, but everything I did see was was pretty good, rather positive. But yeah, uh, yeah. So there, I mean, there was a lot of bumping and grinding going on. Oh yeah, in the in the racing. Um, and I guess uh, what was it? Uh, Daryl Walls Jr. and Denny Hamlin. They had some words. They had some words at the uh, end. Yeah, oh, because uh, it, this race was literally like I mean that right there was like hairs. Yeah. Like there, I don't even think you could have wiped the sweat off the badge of the of the car in front. Oh yeah, like it. Yeah, well, it was then. nuts. And then they had some words because of it, uh, getting you know pushed into the wall and yeah, well, having some rubbing. And then we're just going to gloss over the fact that Austin Dillon, who ended up winning the race because he spun out Eric Almarola. Right. Yeah. He. Uh, we're, I mean, cheap shot. I think, but Almarola was cool with it, so I can't really complain. But. I will complain that we're just going to act like it's okay that he's calling himself Ace because his mom called him Ace as a kid. Yeah, we can't do that. No, nah. that's not how this shit works. No, no, that no. shit won't fly. No, no l- l- listen here, bub. God damn it! I'm calling you bub because it starts with a B, not an A. Fucking hell! Like that. That is not <laughs> okay. All right. You don't. You don't make your own nickname. No, whatever your parents called you doesn't count. Exactly. My parents called me Bud. Yeah. Nobody refers to me as Bud. No. And if you refer to me as Bud, I will punch you in the throat. Oh, hey, dear Bud. Hey, dear Bud. <laughs> Unless if it's in a Canadian accent. Exactly. If Canadian you, upper Midwest, we're good. If you're coming at me like Bob or Doug McKenzie, I mean, it's okay. Yeah. So. But you took and hosers. Oh, God. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Just gonna send it. Oh, God. He's he's like third favorite Canadian. <laughs> 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 it's Bob, then Doug. Than uh, Larry and Tyser. Blair, yeah, Larry. yeah, hell yeah, man, so, what a guy! And then and then all the guys from One Pug Life, that YouTube channel, all them crazy Canadians there from Inwoods, hell yeah, in in Inwards Ontario, nice, them them, them dangle Inwards boys. Oh man, so <laughs> we're just moving away from Canadian YouTube real quick. Oh yeah, he. Uh, so Koenigsegg didn't organize that Agera RS top speed run. No, actually, that was not. Yeah, and and even I, though Christian was there, was Christian actually there? Yeah, for that? he was there. Oh wow! Yeah, there's video of him like hanging out. Like Stradman was there with him. God, really? Damn, that, yeah, that yeah, he was asshole. there. I'm gonna give him a hug when I see him. Uh, what, anywho, Christian or James? <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't know James, so <laughs> but but you know Christian Von. Well, who doesn't know? Yeah, exactly. Who, so anywho, yeah, who doesn't know a billionaire? I mean, come on, true debt. Anywho, so. Um, 
the owner of the vehicle wanted to see how fast it would go. That was his question before the car was even finished being built. Mm-hmm. And Koenigsegg was like, look, we don't have any test tracks or any way, you know, n- nothing is long enough to get this car up to speed. Right. So you're going to have to figure this out on your own. Mm-hmm. And apparently this guy did because he got the road that was that the test was done on shut down. Like that Damn. was all him. He Looks like I need to give him thing. a call and take no. some notes. Shit. Right. God damn. Uh, anywho, so Koenigsegg was like, well, if you do this, then, yeah, we're going to we're going to get a bunch of data from this. Yeah. We're going to do what we can. So they extrapolated so much real-world data from this. And they're actually using all of this uh, with a bunch of changes planned for all future Ajera RSs being built. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of uh, some aerodynamic stuff, um, some stability, you know, stuff. And then uh, uh, higher top speeds, uh, specifically noting that on one of the runs, they hit 284 and a half miles an they hour, did, and they yeah. actually yeah. hit the rev limiter. Damn. So they're that changing that. That was it. So that that's, was it. That's all it is huh. That particular Ajera, that was it. Yeah. So now Conic Seg's like, okay, yeah, well, we can string a few more RPM out of this, and we're going to change this gear. and So they're doing stuff like I, that. I have heard things from people who work there, not mm-hmm. not personally, of course. But, but you know, um, through, through the grapevine. So through the grapevine, seeing it, uh, clips, sound bites on YouTube and things like that of, like, this isn't the the absolute fastest we could do. We we have potential here, right? And they are confident that they they will be the first to crack the three the three hundred mile an hour barrier. Well, I mean they they were playing with almost two eighty five. Yeah, and, yeah. And now they're and yeah. now the company is saying, oh, we didn't know it would go that fast, but now that we have this data, we're going to go knock it out of the park. And right. three three hundred is going to be the park. I have I have one, uh, or I I have uh, more faith in them than I do. For sure, with Bugatti because they are way more corporate than um, yeah than yes. Hennessy or Koenigsegg, and things just take longer with corporate. It just it's true. Yep, it's it, true. They, they, they will not be the first. No, I swear by. There is no way that they will be the first. Yeah, mark my words. Uh, so it really comes down to Hennessy and you know uh, Koenigsegg, and I I yeah. have more faith in Koenigsegg. Yeah, I think I think uh, had. You know, <laughs> Hennessy, there's a lot of flash in the pan there, and they did have a lot of uh, great experiences uh, creating the uh, the Venom GT. Yes. And that's an amazing car. I don't doubt that. Uh, however, that wasn't really their car. Nope. They've never really made a car until the Venom F5, and that's their very first car. I don't think the first car company's ever gonna, that the company makes is going to crack 300 miles an hour. I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. So, I agree with it. So, that's just my two cents there. Your two cents are worth something here. Damn uh, right they are. About two cents? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that. Yeah. I'll take that. But we've got beer and pizza, so. Dope. Yep. So, we're going to need that two cents back. Gee, Thank guys, you. you know what? I kind of spent it. Like, uh... I, went, <laughs> I went to the strip club last night. They won't let me back in, but I went there. I, I ran into VIP with a handful of change and yelled "shotgun, bitch!" and threw it at somebody. <laughs> and then the next thing I knew, I Let's woke up. Let's make it dumpster. hail, bitch! <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, well, there's that da- Daniel Tosh bit that's like yeah. super fucking old. Yes, it yeah. goes up to a, to a homeless man, and he's got the car alarm on him. The guy <laughs> said, <laughs> "Not the car alarm, but the car, just the car alarm." Yes, uh. you hit the jackpot, mofo. Yep. Woo, 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 They're woo, throwing woo, change woo. at this poor homeless guy. <laughs> I mean, that would be entertaining. How amazing would that be just to get like a thousand dollars in quarters? It would be hilarious. I mean, I'd be okay with it until I had to go change them for bills. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, all right. We're down to two things and then the listener question. Ooh. Ah, all yes. Right. So, hey, P Car, yes. I'm surprised you didn't put this one in or you didn't. You know, say much about this. Uh, The 2019 GT3 RS. We've talked a we've talked a little bit about. Okay, well, Well, I I guess we're just going to gloss back over it again. Yeah. Um, Yep. It's you know, like we said last time, it's more power. It's got some tweaks. Like 550 horse, 520 horsepower, 520, 46 pound feet of torque, 346, up to a good old fashioned 9,000 revs. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do. PDK, obviously, the only trans option, but still. Yep. I, I, cool. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, let it wait a year for the point two, 
RS to kind of be a thing, and then have it be like, oh, hey, just kidding. We're going to offer manual gearbox. <laughs> Psych. Right. Trent and I have had a little bit of a back and forth. Uh, discussing, you know, what's going to happen with Porsche and what we should be worried about, um, or if you should be worried, about or if it. I, I don't think I mean I'm not going to be worried. I am a little sad Some that you can't that, that you can't buy an NA 911 anymore. But yeah, that's really the biggest hurdle for me to get over, honestly. Okay, that's fair. I'm sure there was a point in time where everybody was like, "Ew, why would I want to buy a turbo Porsche?" And well, LA. yeah, or yeah, or there's definitely a point where in the more recent past where people were like, "Ew, like electric power steering on a 911." Yeah, exactly. Why? Yeah, would... they're like, "Ew." I, and I was then they made it amazing. And they're like, "All right, like yeah. I'll bite." Like Porsche isn't just gonna do something on a whim and then have no. it be shit. Like, they're going to put the R&D work into it. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's why they stopped making the 944. Oh! oh. Or the 914. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, the savagery. Damn. Oh. I don't know if, if we made the if we made the Cayman a little bit more boxy-shaped. I'd be cool with calling it a 914.6. Honestly, I would love to singerify, as it were, a 914. Oh, 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 oh. Put, like a, like, a 718 Cayman motor in there. I mean, screw it. What about that Williams motor? Fuck it. Stuff that Williams motor the other direction under the back seat where it would be. I'm weak. I know you are. You made me weak. I know you are. Uh, That's right. Come to daddy. Oh, wow. Okay, this is... (laughs) That took a turn for the weirder. I don't know. You're talking about singerifying a 914. Meanwhile, I'm just over here just like, Hybrid 911! (laughs) Nah. (laughs) Nah. For those of you using subwoofers to listen to this, we apologize. <laughs> Have fun with that. that. Everything that was on your shelves is now on the floor. Rest in peace. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> rest in pieces. Uh, if you're rest in list- pepperonis. Oh, man, if you're listening to this at a home with a home stereo, one, shout out to you for having a home stereo in this day and age. I know, right? And if you do, please take a picture and send us to yeah. mailbag at camautomag.com. Bam, oh. there it is. There's there's the uh, there, there's the little mini one. Tell me Just how to go ahead and yeah. drop that nugget on us. There yes, you go. Sir. But anyway, so uh, let's see. Starting price with the GT3 RS is one hundred eighty-seven and a half thousand dollars. With the, uh, with the yeah. delivery charge, it comes to one eighty-eight and change. I think that's. I mean, that's just a, a tick more than the nine nine one RS. The point one RS. The point one was started at one seventy-five. Right. So this is like a little bit more. So it's going to be a good one. Uh, and then you have the uh, the Visoc package. The Visoc package. Vi- what, what, Visoc. What, what's included in this a Visoc package? Well. Uh, funny you should ask. So glad you asked, because we have the list right here. Johnny, tell him what he's won. Hey, in the Vaisock package, you get this fantastic carbon fiber roof. You get carbon fiber steering wheel trim, shift panels, front and rear sway bars, coupling rods, everything in carbon fiber for a luxurious $18,000 price increase. I'm curious of how much weight. Well, first of all, great job, Dave. Thank you. I like it. <laughs> Second of all, Price is Right never called me back. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I'm, I I'm would have curious. been the sponsor, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder uh, how much weight uh, you actually save with all those carbon fiber goodies. That's yeah, really well, interesting. Okay, you say you're that. talking about the carbon well, fiber roof. That that is, if it, even if it doesn't take that much actual weight off, it's taking weight off the very top of the car. It's it's got to be moving in other places. It, it, well, yep. it's, right. well, it's re- but percentage wise, it's reducing the height of the center of gravity. Right, yes. exactly. And by a pretty good amount, I'm sure. Yeah. So uh, Let's see here. Uh, if you want to spend even more money, we have a, a number for weight savings if you get the magnesium wheels. Oh. Mag mag wheels, son. With the mags, mags are baby. coming back, man. Yeah. These, aren't, these aren't granddaddy's keystone slots on the G20 van. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> God, these, these, these aren't these aren't your uh, your weird uncle's American racing. Exactly. <laughs> he, the, he did a burnout so hard, and then made the white sparks come out, and then he couldn't put the Camaro out. Okay, fun fact about magnesium. Um, <laughs> you do know that the Celine S7 body was actually magnesium. I did. Yes. You actually know that. That's yes. one of the one of the little things that a lot of people actually don't know about that car. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so you get to save a uh, a grand twenty five pounds for the low low price of thirteen thousand dollars. That seems reasonable. No, wait, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it seems reasonable because it's a two hundred thousand dollar Porsche. Yeah, I mean, if you look at like proportionally, like the money that the huh. car is worth, 
I mean, screw it. If you've got the money to buy this car, or I mean, hell, if yeah, you're financing at point, it, though, at that point, it's like another like seven a, bucks a month. At that point, it's a dick swinging contest, though, right? It's like, oh, this is carbon. Fiber, well, yeah, because, well, because I'd be getting that car in like the most obnoxious green that it comes in. Oh, yeah. that's funny because my mindset would be like maybe a lava orange or just black. Or, or like uh, I a mean, gunmetal yeah. gray. I could see that. Gunmetal I gray see GT3 all those RS. Colors in that car. <laughs> Imagine looking at like a like a gunmetal gray with like those louvers, those black louvers sticking out of the gunmetal gray. Oh goodness! Oh my! That's yeah. dirty. Oh my! Like Sunny a surprise. Yeah. Sundown it's, to it's, sunrise. <laughs> Dance all night. Dance all night. Dance all night to this DJ. <laughs> Why has my life gone so wrong? But in other news as well, you could buy the point two RS in the AMG GTR green. That is true. Speaking of those cars, there's actually one um, at the dealership in downtown. Yeah, there's yes, one there here. Is. That's right. Yep. Uh, yeah, so expect to pay two nineteen five fifty. Uh, that's before we know how much they're going to gouge you for paint. Right. I would assume at probably another five grand for like the special paint options. Yes. So probably. So two twenty, two twenty five. Yeah. Out the door. I mean, well, I mean plus tax and tag. So let's just go ahead and say two fifty. Yeah. Think, yeah. Uh, because yeah. you're gonna want to register it and of course whatever state you buy it in is gonna want to take their piece of your pie. Unless if it's Montana. <sighs> What are you buying for that quarter of a million dollars? I, I don't, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I want to know exactly how many Porsches are registered or purchased through or in Montana. Well, my my buddy Wes bought his 991.1 GT3 uh, mm. and registered it in Montana. I have a feeling there are more cars registered in the state of Montana than there are the population of Montana well, several I, times over. I would not be surprised. Like a comical ratio of cars to people. Yeah. I would yeah. imagine that's... That's that's probably the exact same as like Tooele or Park City. Yeah, for, yeah, like, like <laughs> Summit County yeah. because of emissions. Yeah, for vehicles yeah. and other locations. Tooele County state. and Summit County. Oh, yeah. exactly. So, uh, on to slightly more plebeian things. Uh, muscle truck. I don't know if this is really plebeian. I mean, it's a truck. Yeah, it's got a tailgate and it's still a Chevy. Yeah. Uh, by it. the way, Yanko SC Silverado. Yep. Those are the words that you need to remember. SC for supercharged? It is, in fact, blown. Ooh. Yep. It, uh, it is uh, supercharged to the tune of 800 horsepower and 740 foot-pounds of torque. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. Crazy 6.2 uh, yeah, it's a, in this the truck. Yeah, it's LT1. Yeah, okay. basically, yeah. It's, it, it's GM performance is pretty much their entire catalog in Just a crate motor, and they, all wrapped, the they wrapped it with a Silverado. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, this is a... This is a package that you can get only at authorized dealers. Now, just like back in the 60s and 70s, all the Yanko Camaros and yeah, like the first and, and stuff like that, they were uh, it was at a certain dealership. Don Yanko's dealership. There he was go. the one Don was, Yanko Chevrolet. Yeah, he was doing the special order so you would get the Camaro with the big engine and the right brakes and the right rear end. Does it only come in a single cab because that is not a pretty truck. Single cab short bed. Yep. Uh, which oh, I I find as an attractive truck. I don't think the performance of having like a crew cab or even an extended cab short bed truck would be as amazing. I mean, that's just me though. I like short trucks. See, I, I don't mind short trucks, but I just don't like single cabs. To be well, fair though, you can build this truck with probably a crew cab or an extended cab. If you wanted, you're probably yeah. gonna end up spending oh, if you start with a new truck and yeah. buy all the parts, you'll probably spend over a hundred grand. I was gonna say this has this has to be a hundred thousand dollar truck. And this actually is a one hundred thousand dollar truck. Yep. As a single cab or like as yes. like this nope. whole yeah. package? Okay. As, this entire yeah. package, if you tick, truck included, if take you all tick, the boxes. Yep, take all the boxes, close to a hundred grand. So Yeah. But I mean it's got custom seats, it's got the decal package, suspension, it's got huge brakes. Here's it's, my question. Would you buy this truck for a hundred thousand dollars? Would I buy this truck for a hundred thousand dollars? Yeah. Oh. Uh I would only because Dodge does not have a demon ram. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Fiat Chrysler, are you listening? I'm sure you are, but like, you know, the 19 people that would buy a Demon Ram, 18 of them don't have the money, so, and I'm one of those 18. 
Damn. No, I, I think a lot of people would want to. I it's it's that whole thing about like the well, I mean the, the SR- station wagons. Yeah, like a lot of like I I think that like the diehards want them. It's just the amount of people that can actually afford them. That's why. Yeah. That like we don't have like wagons aren't like fast wagons aren't really a thing here. Yeah. It's why they killed it off for the CTSV. Yeah. Did not. Uh, eh, yeah. The. It's a yeah. I mean, the muscle truck is kind of a an interesting thing. I, I don't know. I see the I see a pickup as a utilitarian thing. So I mean, I do too. I to mean, be, my, like, my parents and I had one when I was in high school. Um, yeah, and it was a great truck. But but to be fair, if I'm going to spend seventy five thousand dollars on a well optioned Super Duty, it's not that far out of question to just spend the extra 25 and get It's crazy, right? A How super like truck I mean, like if you if you buy, you know, an F250, well, you uh, can w- fully option an F450 Platinum crew cab and it is over $100,000 to live. Yeah, but like for the more pedestrian pickup trucks out there, what's, what's a base F250 run you? Uh, like roll up a, windows. A, a base, well, well, you can't get a work special with crank windows anymore. Well, they I know, but I mean, but, I mean, but you I, get it with the rubber mat. I'm using that as a phrase, basic. though, right? Like, like, right. like, at pri- like entry price, what's an F250 run? I believe run the you? entry price of an 18 uh, Super Duty, like with the gas motor, two wheel drive, regular cab, long bed, you're probably looking at mid 40s. Jesus. Let's I mean, see. we could find out. We're pulling up the Ford site right now. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, like here, I remember when I first heard about a fifty thousand dollars truck. It was the Lincoln Mark LT, right? Which was yep. just a fancy F one fifty, exactly. It and that was fifty thousand dollars. Just like Jesus Christ, like right. who would pay fifty thousand dollars for a truck? Exactly. And then people throwing around sixty five, seventy thousand dollars trucks is like that's not out of the question anymore. So twenty exactly. eight weird. The twenty eighteen Super Duty starts at thirty two eight ninety. Okay, so a little cheaper than I was thinking. Yep. But I, I'm wondering exactly. But that's base, 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 base. Yeah, base, 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 base. I'm not doing it this week. Damn it! All right, not having it. So yeah, I mean it's so. So we're looking at like F250 XL regular cab. Are we Are we gonna build one, Mike? Is that what we're doing here? Are we just gonna tick all the boxes? I mean, let's see what we can do. Are you ticking all the boxes, or are you ticking what you would actually buy? Heavy duty vinyl, forty twenty forty split bench front seats. God damn! Oh, XLTs start at forty one four sixty. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, this is a F two fifty crew cab. You know. Yeah, crew cab. Ooh, King Ranch. Short bed. Yeah. Ooh, so. King Ranch starting at fifties. Yeah, F two fifty limited at seventy nine five. Jesus. That is the base limited F two fifty. Now I bet if you bought a three fifty, you're probably moving it a bit further. Yeah. It's funny because people look at like eighty thousand dollars for a sports car and they're like, "Oh well, I would never buy that. I don't see where my money's going." It's like, "Well, where, where's it going with the truck?" Absolutely, I agree. You, yeah. you get way and more I car see... eighty thousand dollars for from a Porsche than you would from uh, a pickup truck, in well, my opinion. And what's hilarious about this? Oh man, what did that? Because you, you don't want to beat up. Just add to that, like three grand. <laughs> oh, only three thousand. Well, well I remember when the power stroke was like a twenty five thousand yeah. dollar option. But you do not want to be oh, scratching Jesus. up and like no, like nine grand. Oh, I was wrong. Dinging up your uh, your eighty thousand dollar truck. Well, and that's the thing, is and that's, that's the whole point of the truck. Yeah, and that's what gets me is like you said, people complain about eighty k for a car, but I see yeah. way more of these things on the road than I do any eighty thousand dollars sports yeah. car. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And, and it's not like okay. Now I'm seeing a lot of these brand new Fords on a daily basis. A lot of them are work truck specials, but just as many of them are Platinums, Limiteds, and XLTs. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like I'm only seeing a handful of them here. Like I'm no. seeing, I'm seeing probably a dozen every time I get on the freeway. Yeah. And these are all fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar trucks. Sometimes a yeah. hundred thousand dollar trucks. Exactly. Yeah. It's nuts. It, I mean, and at that point, it becomes more of a. You know, more of a fashion thing. Yeah, and like you, and would, I like an if accessory. I, wonder I, if that's I, I, I honestly think it is. Uh, p- people are, have still continuously been moving away from the minivan, mm-hmm. and the wealthy people either buy uh, really nice trucks or they buy old, like you know, Escalades and things like that. Or if they're really wealthy, buy G wagons. So yeah, and, and Land okay. Rover, yeah. and, yeah. and, and no, big Land Rovers. Right. Right. And that I think, I think trucks. In it's, the U.S. are kind of following the same route that, just like you said, the Land Rovers and the G-Wagons are. Yeah. 
where the rest of the world has these as very plebeian utilitarian it's vehicles. A very niche. They are yeah. equipment. Yeah. yeah. They are like you could buy a Farm base G Wagon yeah. and yeah. you used it to go to the market. You mm-hmm. used it to haul your equipment. You used it to drag stuff around the farm. You used it to pull somebody out of a ditch. You right. used it to maybe plow your field. Like, I, you know, in or an like extreme th- case. Or throw in lumber yeah. or uh, in, concrete. In the, in the case of Unamogs, they were sold basically as implements right. in and, other and countries. Just, and kind of what I've been thinking about, you know, trucks, or when I think of the use of a pickup truck, I kind of think of, like, the advertisements that you see from Ford or Chevy or Dodge. And right, like, like back in the day when they're, they're using, like, a, a, a big, you know, excavator to dump a bunch of dirt from twenty feet up. Into yeah, the bed of this and like brand plowing new truck. through like big mud puddles in the forest. Right, exactly, exactly. And I mean, I imagine maybe that's what the average person is doing. I don't, I don't know. Do you think the average person is doing that with a ninety thousand dollar truck? No, if you're buying the ninety thousand dollar truck, you are occasionally hauling a boat or a camper that's, or somewhere. Like, I could see okay, someone doing that with a thirty five thousand dollar truck. To be fair, well, though, like a Frontier or I, something. I cannot count. On two hands, the number of like platinum super duties or King yeah. Ranch super duties that I have seen hauling construction equipment. No, if yeah. anything, they'll be hauling horse trailers. Probably. Well, I've, I've, yeah. well, no, I'm saying like I've seen more than ten. Yeah. Oh, you are like I, I cannot count it just on two hands. Oh, okay. No, yeah. Like, gotcha. Like yeah, there, I mean, it's... there have been over a dozen instances where I have seen an eighty thousand dollar truck. Hauling construction Good equipment. Good for them. Or something yeah. like that. So it tells me maybe they're an independent contractor that's doing yeah. pretty well. Maybe they j- just got really good at the write-off game, and yeah. they're trying uh, to get this thing written off as best that's they can. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Or then you have the guy who, you know, he's been working hard, and he has toys, and he wants to take them places. And, and that's another had, reason why a lot of people yeah. buy trucks is to haul boats exactly. and ATVs They're toys. and exactly. horses. Yeah. Like, exactly. It is, a, it is an accessory for the toys that you have. Right. So, like... And the nice that, truck is a prerequisite for the nice boat, exactly. or the nice ATVs. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, I see a lot of that or out, race like cars. Sand Mountain and stuff yeah. too. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah you p- go pulling race cars. You go drive through the paddocks at uh, UMC, yeah. and yeah. you see a lot of these lot spendy of, trucks. Yeah, you see a lot of these Class A RVs hauling stacker trailers with two or three cars in them too. Yeah. You know? Yep. So obviously, the people that want to pay to play, I mean, that's the market they're going for. Yeah. Well, truth. Word indeed. Drop mic. Feel free to Damn. tell us how wrong we are about that one, or tell me how right I am. Exactly. Mailbag at camautomag dot com. Camautomag on all social media. Massage our nipples and our egos. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, going from something that boosts our egos to something very shameful. This week's question was: What is the dumbest place you and your vehicle have ever gotten stuck? Oh no! And this stemmed from you know me getting the mini minivan stuck. Of course, yeah. And then also remembering that right after I got new tires on my Outback, we had a storm, and I managed to get stuck in the exact same goddamn place with with new all seasons. Yes, new all seasons. Okay, gotcha. Yep. So could not claw my way up. Ah, oh. struggled to get back into the driveway. Damn it! I think yes. it's a sign of the times, Mike. God, it really is. Anyway, so threw this up in a few places, you know, on uh, the cam page. I and, threw uh, it up on Motor United. Tight. So I'm going to blow through the one response we got in Drift, Utah. And let me guess it's Stucky. No, it is Ross Jensen. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Stucky, where are you at, though? Uh, he's, All right. I uh, know Stucky's been stuck before. Oh, yeah. It's, it's in stuck. his name. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> Ross Jensen, he was stuck at the bottom of his quarter-mile driveway in the snow with a four-wheel drive truck that wouldn't shift into four-wheel drive because of a fault code. So he had to sit there for a half an hour for his dad to get home and drag him up with a four-wheeler. Nice. That's yep. so sad. Oh, yes. And, yes, it is always funny to watch some tiny vehicle drag a much larger vehicle. What, what's also great is uh, seeing a, just, like, a brand-new, like, a Wrangler, like a, you know, extended Wrangler or whatever, and, like, seeing them pull out, like, a BMW uh, 5 Series GT yeah. from the snow. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah, man. It's like you spent all this money... On this shitty car that can't go off road, and you're you're stuck on a snowy road, and look who comes to save you! Oh yeah, the thirty thousand dollar G. <laughs> look who it is. <laughs> oh man, you want to throw some motor United stuff? Uh, at us? I would. My my phone is having a bit of a tough time uh, loading things. Can you uh, pull? You're you're on Motor United. Could you uh, probably pull some things up and I can read them? Did you post this in UAE? I did. We didn't get any responses. Oh, go for it. Absolutely none. Uh, no, last time I looked. Ah, because everyone's ego and 
ESA Association of Euros is uh, fairly delicate. But they did so great last year, and last they're, week. And they're too busy freaking out about the, uh, the <laughs> confidential <laughs> meet. Right, right. Oh, yeah, you know what? That's right. Yeah. But it also probably has to do with very soft egos. Probably. Yeah, yeah. you're right. There, there is absolutely no <laughs> comment on yeah. that. Uh, feel free to head over to the camp page and start rifling off some of those while I try to find... Uh, there it is. Found Gavin's. Let me go ahead and. Uh... God damn, damn automatic. Here we okay, go. Okay, Connor Reynolds. Uh, you said a millionaire's front lawn, but you didn't elaborate on it. So, so bullshit. And Fuck. then uh, Joe Laggy, Laggy, Laggy is our is a inside joke that we have. Um, he's he he called me a heaping sack of shit. That's because I had called him one. And Good job. Also, um, promoting unity. I like it. <laughs> He God. also says the the Oregon Coast Beach. Uh, he w- <laughs> he was a retard. His quotes or his word um, when he drove his own TL out there and it sank like a beached whale. So that's fun. Here I'm just gonna. Go ahead. Yes. There we go. Had to fight the pizza. <sighs> Teamwork makes the dream work. All right, Connor Rowe uh, commented as well. He said in Florida. Uh, a lot of state wilderness areas are covered in sugar sand, which is extremely fine and will be very deep. Uh, when he was a Boy Scout growing up, he's got uh, – I've gotten a truck. Oh, he yeah, he got a, a truck and trailer stuck a couple times in it, so that was fun. Uh, Austin Sissom said a bar ditch in the middle of nowhere. Not even really surprised by that, knowing by his character. Huh. Uh, he got locked. <laughs> oh, D- uh, Doug Pinsett, the Almighty Doge Pinsett. Uh, he said uh, he got locked out of his Grand Marquis once. That's really about it. Hmm. I mean, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess that counts. Sure. God, Cody Britton backed his car onto a boulder. Yeah, Mike. Can you read that one? Because you're you're closer to the screen oh, than I am. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Cody Britton. This is from when I was first learning to drive stick. I was backing my car into the driveway. It was. It, it's was kind of steep. Come on, it's proofread, people. And I had the wheel pointed too far towards my yard, which had this awfully large bush with a boulder behind it. I went to back up and didn't realize I had the car in neutral, and then went into my yard, almost hitting the bush. I had to get my roommate to help me get out of it. So embarrassing. Nice. a boy. That's how you fuck up Let's property. Let's see uh, Shane Carroll with a special guest appearance by Scotty Honeycutt. Uh, they were at an ATV park. Long story short, we got buried. The group they were following left them behind. Oh, man. So at 1 a.m., they were digging the axes out of the mud with their bare hands in the blackness. That's in the awful. middle of a bamboo forest. It's like, now I'm all over again! Congratulations, you just triggered a Vietnam flashback. Goddamn. Hashtag PTSD. Uh, <laughs> got a vine wrapped around the angle. On the, oh, man, around the axle. I believe we were stuck for three hours. Wow. Fuck so, okay, that. plus one to you guys for getting unstuck, and minus a thousand for all of your asshole friends that yeah. ditched you. What the hell is that? I mean, it's funny on like, Top Gear, but like when you do it like in person, it's yeah. just a douche move. Yeah, we ride in packs for a safety thing. Yeah. And you just bail on your homies that need your help. Yeah, Never leave a man behind. A, that's when you're just an asshole. Yeah, they're not your friend anymore. Yeah, they, they are, are not. not. Yeah, fuck that. New. No. Nope. Uh okay well I mean we've got uh, we've got the cam page pulled up mm-hmm. we got some answers here if you want me to crack a couple of those off please do Trent and Nathan Tanner he says I've been stuck in my parents' driveway with two different all wheel drive vehicles all wheel drive means nothing if your vehicle isn't tall enough to clear the snow drifts this is true he says yesterday was the second time and the snow drift was close to three feet tall my avalanche didn't stand a chance. I mean, plus one for trying, though. Hell yeah. Ooh, he's trying. <laughs> Ooh, he's trying. Uh, I can imagine it looked like an old Chevy Avalanche commercial, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, they were driving those things through all kinds of snow banks and shit. Yeah. That was the that was the thing. I remember those. Yeah. Uh, Camcast superfan Brandon Kuhn. Hey, Brandon. Hey, he says, uh, my neighbor got stuck on his nearly level driveway a couple of years back in an Econa box with summer tires. That would do it. Not surprising. That, that's Not amazing. <laughs> now, knowing where he lives, that is actually not too far from par for the course. 
honestly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they say West Valley's full of smart people. Uh, he, he says the best he's done is sliding a Ford Tempo off the side of the approach road to Avon in the Ogden Valley. Woot. And then bending the hell out of a rear suspension arm whilst getting pulled out. Nice. To which Dave Kuhn replied, and then me fixing it. <laughs> and then Brother Brandon had to uh, clarify once again. Uh, he fixed it after Junkyard Adventures, which tells me that was probably a point in time where Dave was drunk. <laughs> Ian, of course. Ian Perry just posted up a picture of his uh, super slammed 280ZX high centered on the edge. God damn it, Ian. Of the other side. <laughs> God, God damn it. Of a very, very flat road in the middle of nowhere. On a, on a dark desert highway. Out there doing your fucking street cool, shenanigans. Cool wind in your hair. Yeah. I, I, I was picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, yeah. Smelling what you're stepping in. Thanks, man. Wiping what you're swiping. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he tell us about that? I think about, he had about, mentioned. Him, about him being high center. When we, when we were in Vegas? I'm sure he mentioned something I, I about it. Yeah. I think he did. Yeah. he did. That was when we were playing with the Corolla. Right? Yeah. That was, that was at his house. Yeah. 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 Shout out to Ian. Yep. Mr. Uh, Mr. Coke Bottle himself. Uh, I don't know what the hell to call what, what's it. Yeah, potato Instagram? Sparkles. Yeah, that's what it was. That's the one. Oh, love it. It was yes. sparkly something. Yeah. That. Yep. Every time I see the word sparkles, I just think of <laughs> Ian Perry's cars and then the Mr. Sparkle Homer Simpson head. Yeah. yeah. That's just all I think of. Did you also think about that hubcap you found? The hubcaps that we found? Hubcaps. The pair of hubcaps that, that are sitting fit, like perfectly on those those SSRs or whatever he had. <laughs> yeah. The Hayashis or whatever was on his car. Amazing. Shit was dope. Amazing. The yes. hubcaps that are now sitting in my garage. Just waiting. Just waiting for the day. We're waiting to give them to somebody. We somebody just, with that, 14s. That, that should be the, the next uh, cam giveaway, regardless if you have 14s. Which, oh, yeah. can I just throw out total side note? Yeah. Um, and I think I told Ian this when we actually stuck them on his car, but I'm like 99% sure that those hubcaps are the same design that they had on the Boost Mobile Poser Mobile, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> which, was an, which was a Corolla Coupe. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that's just amazing throwing funny. it out there. That's really funny. <laughs> Uh, anywho, so uh, Alex Praysop, another hey, CamCast fan. Alex! Yep. Uh, he says, base of my driveway, small incline from road to drive. I pulled the Del Sol out real quick to see the exhaust setup I had just completed. That was before he put on the uh, spoon in one exhaust. Uh, and I figured the snow wasn't soft enough to sink in. Well, the splitter dug into the ice and snow, preventing me from being able to go backwards or forwards. Ooh. Uh, the neighbors got to hear the new exhaust that night more than they probably wanted to. <laughs> Hashtag Honda problems. Nice. nice. Yeah. Unfortunately, now people with Subarus do that. Yep. Tear. One single Indian tear. Indeed. Is it an Indian tear because it's going to suck back into your skin? Oh. oh. That, got, that got way darker than I was planning. Wow. <laughs> Damn. By the way, dude wasn't even an Indian in those commercials. He was like some Italian guy. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course. Why is it got to be an God Italian damn guy? damn it. <laughs> like, oh, uh, can't even have actual man. Indians on TV anymore. <sighs> Jesus. Nope. Well, do we want to share any of our own war stories? Or I mean, we got... I mean, we got a couple. We got any? a couple. We can still get Andy Mensch, Antonio oh, Ortiz. Well, 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 uh, yeah, let's, blow, blow, let's blow. blow through those. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Antonio Ortiz Jr., he says, in my MR2, I got stuck in one inch of snow on my driveway. Could Attaboy. go up, could reverse without spinning side to side and curb checking the wheels. Well, I mean, that's balls for driving an MR2 in snow. I mean, yeah. that's like I'm scared mad of driving, props. I'm scared of driving an MR2 on dry pavement. I mean, I want to, but I want to scare myself, Actually, myself uh, shitless. Actually, I don't know if, if Yom remembers this or not, but back when I had the, the Bastard, my, oh, my yeah. Integra, my B20 VTEC Integra, I almost traded that car straight across for a 94 Turbo MR2. Yeah. I with some goodies. I don't remember this. Oh, okay. Well, I thought I told you this. No. Uh, the kid came over, and he test drove my car, and he's like, oh, dude, that's fucking awesome. I want it. I love it. Uh, here, drive mine. See what you think, right? And, well, I took it out. You know, got a little hot on it, right? Snap over, steer the shit out of this thing, right? Nice. Put it off into the weeds super, nice. super quick. And, like, handed the keys back and was like, nah, I'm good. Keep in my car. I, that, yeah. I still have a thing about MR cars to this day. Yeah. So 
We should do a thing on uh, Tristan Fuller's uh, 360 horsepower. Yes. Boosted. Yeah, I love Tristan's oh, car. I wanted to drive it. So yeah. Tristan's bad. deuce. That, that, is that that that's a goal for uh, 2018? That is sure. that is a that is a Mister Two to yes. uh, to pay attention to. Yes. Let's see. Uh, Andy Mench. Hi, Andy. Shout out to Andy. You want to you want to give that one a roll? Yeah, I can read Andy's thing. One uh, of my favorite Miata drivers. I hold the Honda front wheel drive record for distance on the Baby Lines back trail in Moab. My '84 Prelude went far enough to lose traction and have the exhaust ripped off, and the glory of that moment is everlasting. Oh. That sounds like a damn good time. Rough. No lie. Atta boy. Mm. Man. Let's see. Travis Cox. Not sure if it's the stupidest, but most spectacular. Uh, Hideaway Valley, Utah. Small community out in the mountains. He was there in a 93 Saturn four-door, so his buddy could try and buy a car. Middle of winter. Snow-packed roads and super slippery. The house was the midpoint on a hill, so as we tried to leave my car, only made it three-quarters of the way up the hill and would only spin. So thinking I would need to go to the bottom and get a run up, I started backing down the hill, floored to spin the front end around. A move I've done a thousand times, and the car kept spinning, slid into a ditch. It being winter, there was a lot of snow. The ditch didn't really look like a ditch until my car fell into it. Ended up sitting at a 45-degree angle with the driver's side buried in the snow. Lucky some dude in a big truck saw and was able to yank us out. Good times. Nice. Tight. <laughs> ah. Sounds like a good time indeed. Oh, yeah. Uh, Luke Dreyer, Camcast super fan. Hey, Luke. Hey. He says he got his all-wheel drive G35 stuck on his front lawn. Nice. Uh, he says, uh, I put You know, you're vehicles... not supposed to drive on that, right? <laughs> Actually, I think where he lives, they probably have a law against it. Probably. Uh. But, anywho, he says, I, uh, I put my vehicles there while I shovel the driveway and sidewalks. The fun part was successfully pulling it out, pulling out the G35 with the Primera. Ha! <laughs> Which is all wheel drive as well. It is. Isn't yeah. It? Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So that's fun. It's a Miata that isn't a Miata. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trent Bray, a like man Trent from Sandy, the yeah, shadowy Trent, billionaire himself. Tr- Trent Hi, from Trent. Sandy. <laughs> uh, Hello. Anywho, uh, Trent is notably semi famous for driving all kinds of rear wheel drive vehicles that probably shouldn't be in the snow. Well, especially ones that are red and shaped like snow. penises. Yes. Yes. Uh, he says, uh, my old BMW 128 was stuck right in front of my driveway with studded snow tires. I drove out of my plowed driveway onto the unplowed road, and the rear wheel slipped straight towards the curb and beached itself there till a couple, a couple of neighbors pushed me out. Wow. If, it's, if you have studded snow tires and you got, like, good, like, weight balance. Mm, yeah. I don't how know. are you? How'd you fuck that up, Trent? There are many. I stopped asking those kinds of questions. <laughs> I've just learned to just, like, yep, well, this is a thing. Just kind of play them, but... Just play it as it lies. All right. Yeah. And then uh, Camcast Superfan Alex Crane. Hey, Alex. What up, dude? He he ran a... a, a l- Please l- tell me you you drove the 302. <laughs> oh, no. This is not the 302. I read this... Uh, this this is actually about his work truck. Yeah. Ah. And yeah, I, I don't recall exactly what he does, but... It's something engineer of some sort. Things. That's right. But he, anywho, he has a work truck. Yes, he does. Uh, so he says, my work truck got stuck at a gold mine in the middle of the desert a couple weeks ago. I had just left, uh, let my mechanic have my jack and tools to use two days earlier, and he broke it. So it was sans jack at the time. Needless to say, I got a flat. Had to borrow tools from passersby to get it all sorted. Went directly to AutoZone once I got back into town and bought a floor jack, fix a flat, compressor, and a lug wrench to keep in my truck and never lend out again. Uh, also got five new beefier tires so I can actually drive with confidence in the mines. You'd be surprised how hard it is to concentrate on something as trivial as changing a tire when a bunch of fellow miners are hanging around watching and heckling. Uh, I can no, I believe yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I believe that. Uh, also had this happen in a rental truck in the middle of the desert between El Paso and Carlsbad. Enterprise doesn't have jacks or tools in their trucks, so I had to hitch a ride on a Greyhound to the Border Patrol checkpoint. To use their phone and get AAA out there. Wow. Thank God for Greyhound. I don't think yeah. anybody's ever said thank God for Greyhound. No. I can't imagine that no. is a statement. No. Yeah. I'm part of a group, Alex, that maybe you should join. It's called uh, Previously Unsaid Statements in Human History. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, because that, that last statement you had right there is uh, right up there with uh, Hillary's Not a Crook. Oh. Man. Sorry, had to, had to. Man, love rules, okay. So, damn. Country so. and Western is rubbish. 
<laughs> we got both types of music here, country and western. So rolling, 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 rolling. Keep those doggies rolling, rawhide. <laughs> So, do we yeah. have any of our own war stories? Uh, well, I, I guess, Mike, you kind of aired your grievances. I did. And I got a couple I just want to blow through real quick. So, okay. uh, Joey, JDM Joey, uh, <laughs> pulling out of a collection agency's parking lot. Thank you, Lady and Cavalier. You'll always be remembered for your deeds. Uh huh. Let's see. Uh, Tyler Mike Sell, trying to have a truck off and drove through the edge of a puddle. And then he includes a picture of the truck buried. Wow! Like door is in water, bed yeah. is submerged. This, like this little Toyota is going swimming. Like fucking buried. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like a dog that's like in a frozen lake that's trying to like climb out like onto the ice. It's just kind of like its arms hanging like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's trying. Oh yeah. Let's see. Ooh, he's Matt, trying. Matt Barker. Uh, when I was 18 and had to go somewhere quick in my 68 VW Squareback and tried to back through the snowdrift at the end of the driveway, all I ended up doing was high centering the flat bottom of the car with both back wheels completely off the ground. It took forever to dig under the car enough to teeter off the snow pile. Good work. I can picture that, too. That's Good hilarious. <laughs> well, Gavin. Yeah. Do you have one? Um, I have a couple dumb stories. All right. Um, Love them. One of them was, uh, it's funny, it was the very first project I ever worked with with Integrated that got published. Um, and it was, I, we were shooting uh, Tyrell uh, from Envision, his, uh, at the time, uh, his, so, uh, what they called it Snowflake, the uh, the R8 uh, that had like, you know, airbag, that was on airbags and had the wing uh, with the ro- the rocket box on it that was like, Attached to the wing, yeah. It was like, yeah. So, uh, we were doing a shoot for that because we put like you know a stage two tune on it or whatever. And I drove my Outback up to through Emigration because I was like, it's a road that's open year round. It's kind of scenic in some areas. I need to get some flybys. It's pretty open. It should be pretty good location to shoot. So, I pull my Outback into this uh, pull off where I normally. Like, I do a lot of shoots uh, in that parking lot now. It's like a really scenic backdrop and not too hard to get in and out of, really. I mean, for if you're really low, then it's a little treacherous, but it's not that bad. Um, I had some uh, fairly worn all-season tires on my Outback. Exactly and, what you want for and, snow. And uh, there's a, a remark that was said earlier tonight where it's like, it doesn't matter if you have all-wheel drive or not, if you don't have the clearance... Then I mean that. So there, there, there's a bunch of snow in this parking lot, and I drove up and I just stopped, and I must have the heat from the motor and like everything underneath must have heated up some snow, and it must have sank in that spot. And when I tried to drive away, I couldn't. Mm, nice. So, and and so, boy. So here I have Tyrell waiting in his R8 supercar, and I can't give him a go ahead, and I can't uh, have him pull me out. So I wait for a passerby and like a GMC fifteen hundred or twenty five hundred or whatever pull me out. Amazing. So that happened. Um, I, I've done a lot of stu- dumb shit though. I've I've had Sunday shenanigans that have gone awry. Well, who hasn't in this day and age? Yeah, but That's yeah, true. but mine mine was on like a desolate like mountain road, <laughs> <laughs> like most of them are. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Um, Luckily, I was with my buddy uh, Rob Gaderi and my other buddy Riley Barlow, and they were able to help pull me out. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, 2016, I was uh, daily driving the rental, the BMW 528i that I remember that. Mike and I co own. Yeah. The drift car. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was it was the end of 2016, it was like right before I. Rod knocked the motor. So it was on coilovers, and I was on M3, E36 M3 Snowflakes, the staggered set of wheels. Yeah. Yep. Um, car is slammed. Like, it is tucking 17s. And I've got, you know, in typical drifter fashion, I've got garbage tires on all four, right? Um, well, because BMW put a notoriously weak axle and differential setup and six-cylinder E39s, I blew an axle, and I'm driving this car, you know, welded diff with one axle missing. 
because for some reason they were a week out everywhere. Nobody had one in stock. So I'm driving this car with one axle, basically one wheel drive with a welded diff. And at the time I worked in Saratoga Springs. So I'd stop at, you know, the McDonald's there at Crossroads. Was this uh, car docs? This is when I was working at the car doctors, yeah. Okay. Um, and so I pull into the McDonald's drive through. Well, okay. This this happened a few times. Uh, the first time, I got stuck in the Del Taco parking lot going through it to McDonald's. Nice. That was when I had both axles, so it was two wheel drive, and it okay. just I just sank into the shit. And of <laughs> course, bald ass tires wasn't going anywhere. No. And I was getting so mad with it, like it was to the point where I'm like dropping this thing off the rev limiter in fifth. And just pegging the speedo, <laughs> clouds of smoke, trying to Damn. get heat burr, and traction. Burr, burr, yeah, burr, burr, exactly. Burr, 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 burr. And, which eventually worked. I mean, I killed a pair of tires that morning. Well, uh, col- color me surprised. Yeah, right. Who's surprised? Uh, <laughs> so uh, another time, I actually made it through the Del Taco parking lot into the McDonald's parking lot and got stuck just before turning into the drive through so close. Um, that was one right wheel there. drive. That was right so there. Close. Was right there. And I thought I'd be smart and tr- and like turn traction control back on because I always drove that car with it off. Yeah. So I thought I'd be smart and turn traction control on and the car like any time I'd let the clutch out on any kind of power, the car would just die. Ooh. It would just pull so much timing and throttle and it would just nope and then shut off. Damn. So that was a fun one. I ended up having to get pushed out by a very nice lady and a couple of her uh, sons uh, in a Plymouth Voyager behind me. Hell yeah. Nice. So I gave up on that one, and I just kept going past the drive through and got back onto a plowed street and went back to work hungry. Yeah. And then the, the one that takes the cake was, you know, third time's the charm here. I made it through the Del Taco parking lot, through the McDonald's parking lot, ordered at the kiosk, Got to the window to pay, oh, no. and it was so iced over, and I was still driving on one axle. I could not move from window number one. Oh no! So you couldn't get out of the drive-through. I could not get out of the drive-through now, <laughs> because it's a lowered car, and because I'm lazy, I was like hugging the building to give him change, and so I, I couldn't open my door. <laughs> no. So, so I'm sitting oh. at window number one. Oh no! I have paid for my meal. Yeah, and I the car is not moving, and I cannot get out of the car without climbing over my console. Right? Oh. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I tried for like five minutes. People are getting pissed. They're leaving the drive-through. Of course They're they honking. are. And the dude at the window is just like. Dude, give me a second. I got you, man. And he comes out with like three other guys from the back. They stopped making food to come out and push me to oh, the second wow. window. Wow. They know the struggle. They know the struggle. They know what's up. They yeah, probably, exactly. They probably own slammed cars themselves. I don't yeah. know, man. I don't or, know. But you know. yeah, so they helped push me to the second window. That's nice. Where I was able to get my now cold breakfast sandwich. Mm. I mean,. It was, it was honestly in their best interest to get flow going again. Well, yeah. right, because so then they could feed were, more people. Yeah, people were getting mad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, and that, I was getting some pretty nasty stares. Oh, I can. I'm sure you were, but I, I uh, doubt that at all. And I almost got stuck leaving window number two. <laughs> like really? I had to commit and like cut people off to keep this car moving until I got back to a plowed surface. Wow, oh, God. it was gnarly. So what you're saying is this isn't really a winterized vehicle. It never w- should have been driven on anything but a dry day. Like that I mean, I I I had a shit of a time getting this car to move on a rainy day. Yeah. Ooh. So let alone snow. Yeah. You yeah. know, a little bit of drift lube, and the thing just wanted to, it. It would go anywhere but straight. All right, then. So, but yeah, so not once, not twice, but three times I've been stuck in a slammed BMW on summer tires in eating establishment parking lots and a drive through. That's awful. Amazing. Bam. There it is. My condolences. Well, there we go. (laughs) That's okay. That car's coming back. Hell yes, it is. And it's going to be awesome. I want to see it. 
It, yeah. It'll still look just as shitty as it always looked. It's it, just going to go sure. faster. I'm yeah, not going to lie. I want to see that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It looked pretty ridiculous. It still does. Good. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Another episode in the can. That's yeah. it. Boom, bitches. Yeah. Thank you for uh, participating along with us. We God, love it when you do. One. Yeah. It's not going to be too terribly long. I mean, it's going to be a long start, though. It's going to be almost two hours after yeah. editing. It's going to be it's going to be under two hours. It's average for the three of us. Okay, that's yeah, shockingly, that's good. shockingly, we have shorter episodes when there are more of us. But how great is it that we have a table? Yes, and, like Mike stands and stuff, and we can like engage with each other. Yes, the fact that my hand doesn't hurt because I'm not having right? to hold a microphone. Well, it's yeah. nice leaning back too. Just uh, yeah, like this and just like kind of just, and just being like, relaxed. I mean, yeah. it's great. I was able to comfortably eat my pizza and hold a yes. beer. Yeah. And I'm over here on my Sorry, tablet. I, I was looking stuff up. Yeah. Dude. And man, we this almost... Long, long overdue. Yes. Damn, we almost look like we know what we're doing. God. Almost. We're clawing <laughs> our way to mediocrity, <laughs> people. Let's not get carried away with ourselves here. Nope. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're going to have to post a picture of this on the on the Camstagram. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. This, this is going to be the hashtag good night, right? Probably. Yeah. But anyway... Uh, thank nice. You. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But uh, thank you for joining us for this episode. Uh, thank you for joining us for every episode and every other thing that we do. Uh, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify. Like, rate, review us, share us with your friends. That really helps us out because, you know, if you like something, odds are your friends like something. And if they don't know about us, they'll probably like us. So, you know, share us around. Exactly. Yep. Because we like it when people share. Damn right. Uh, yeah, follow us on YouTube, all social media, at Cam Automag. Head over to CamAutomag.com. There's the occasional thing over there, like mm-hmm. the uh, the Craigslist Porsche 959 that we were talking yeah. about a week and a half before anybody yeah. else was. That Fucking was, hip as fuck. We that were, was some shit. We were in it before Jalopnik was, before anybody else was. Bam. By a good week. So That really means something. I yeah, mean, it does. It's something worth bragging about, I think. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. It's all good, uh, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out to our sponsor, Steady Broke, SteadyBroke.com. Use uh, coupon code CAMAUTO15. Get yourself some stuff for 15% off. Look swaggy. Damn right. And, uh, yeah, we'll be out at NASA Utah events, Drift Utah events, you know. Canyon couple, carving events. A couple car shows here and there. Yeah. making you know. our. Own, we should have an event of our own. Um, Ooh. I'm kicking around the idea of some stuff. Yeah, that'd yeah. be fun. You know, we, ha- we have some things that we would like to do. Yep. Yes. But uh, yeah, follow. It'll us. happen. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Until next time, I've been Mike. I've been Dave. And I've been Gavin. Yep. That's uh, CamAutomag dot com. CamAutomag on all social media. We will see you guys next week. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now for reals though, like, are we gonna post that cool shit? I, I. Why can't we have a car meet like of our own? Like, how dope would that be? I, I mean, know. it's a thing. Yeah.